What's up guys? Welcome to my tarot channel, Tarot by the Intuitive Teacup. That's me. My name's Annie. Welcome to this All Signs Tarot reading. Um, please come into the readings with an open heart and an open mind. Take away only what resonates for you and release the rest. Check below for timestamps so you can hop directly to your reading and do remember to check out the reading for your sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs. All right, let's do it. Hello Aries, how you doing? Let's see what's coming in for you guys romantically. Messages for Aries, best and highest good regarding their love life, their situation, what's coming in in the next couple weeks. So, who might be presenting in this spread? Ooh, the past is coming back. The past is coming back. Yeah, something that you thought was over and done with, it ain't done yet. All right, so whoever this person is, what are their current feelings in regards to my Aries out there watching? What are their current feelings? Yeah, they're still holding on to you and want to make an offer or they want to fix it or they want to build something more. You know, if, you, if, if you're currently booed up or married up, whatever, and you've just kind of been going through a difficult time, this person still holds on to sort of like the memories of like the honeymoon phase and it's almost like they want to reinvigorate it, breathe new life into it, maybe add some sort of change to the relationship that allows it to grow and flourish more because it could be that you know maybe someone went through some sort of hardship you know illness a loss of a job whatever i'm not predicting this right like i don't like to predict scary stuff but ultimately this is about romance and yeah with the ten of wands things got heavy so for a lot of you it felt like you had to put something down or vice versa someone had to let you go because they just they couldn't you know show up in the relationship they wanted to either way it does come from a sense of maturity um with the six of cups though there were feelings there so that says to me this was hard it wasn't easy for this person to completely dismiss you or vice versa you know bittersweet it's like you know i know we can't be together now but but, you know, there's there's still feelings there. This is like holding on to the idea that you guys could could build something more. Anything else for feelings? So I don't know. There's there's a deflection of feelings, though, which is kind of interesting. I mean, I don't have a lot of cup energy. This to me is very much holding on to the idea of something. Um, and, and for a lot of you, it's almost like I, sometimes I see the seven of wands of like I'm wanting to make myself better or I'm wanting to get to some sort of place in my life where I'm able to make some sort of change or reinvigorate my love life. But first, I got to do wor some work on myself. It's like I got to show up, that sort of thing. So I think this person had to show up for themselves or again, vice versa. Maybe it's both of you. Maybe they were working on some financial stuff. Maybe they weren't feeling great about themselves. They, they had lack of confidence because maybe they were just stretched too thin or they weren't in a job that they were happy at. And that was kind of trickling over into the relationship so feeling wise it feels like this person is going to present when they feel better about themselves and they do seem to be showing up and doing the work leo vibes are coming through right now and then potential action towards my aries let's say in the next couple weeks what, whatever we're allowed to know potential action towards aries in the next couple weeks all right so baby steps baby steps <laughs> i was thinking what about bob baby steps to get on the bus you guys know that movie um I don't know. Sometimes the Seven of Cups feels like overwhelming feelings. So it's almost like this person is trying to get a pulse on how they're feeling or how best to approach you. I also think with the page, I don't necessarily know if it's communication yet. This could be doing a little bit of... It almost feels like doing a little bit of research to see if you're still single. I don't know if that applies to all of you, but if I don't know how much in touch or in communication you are with this person. So there could be the thought of either looking to see if you have other options or they themselves may have other options, but it's, it's almost to me, it's like yours. I mean, this is your reading Aries. You clearly stand out above the rest, but I almost think it comes from a place of they might think you're too good for them. Yeah, so the hermit shines his lantern. It might involve a Virgo, but the hermit shines his lantern on the place of focus. So emotional options, or to be honest, it's a Scorpio card. So in this reading, it might have to do with feeling very deeply, but not necessarily knowing how to communicate that yet. So, you know, not to have it fizzle at the end. I can't make up storylines that aren't there. I think this per person is like slowly approaching the idea of needing to get wanting to discuss feelings but it's like they need to get a pulse on it first and i mean i know it's like why are you making it so complicated have you like me or you don't it's deeper than that it runs deeper than that i think this person actually has a very deep soul and maybe they have strong scorpio placements or water placements whatever i do like that there's feelings showing up um and i actually like this too because with virgo virgo is all about sort of 
editing and and kind of weeding out what isn't necessary it wants to get down to like the pureness of it right you know it's, it's virginal it's like it's the pure essence of it that's very virgo categorizing classifying editing removing things that don't belong and that's what i think this is doing in terms of like emotions that were getting in the way maybe it was guilt fear pride i think this person is doing self-assessment this week aries so that's really what i see for you guys um let's see let's see keep his, keep his love arrows let's do one of those <clears throat> And it might be, Aries, that you have other options currently. You know, I think you probably know who this is if it's your storyline. But uh, let's see. Let's see. Boop, boop, ba -doop. Anything for Aries? What's a good card for them to hear or see? Something, something that would help them and guide this narrative. It says, moving on, endings that bring healthy beginnings. Yeah, focus on the healthy beginnings. I don't know, Six of Cups to, to the uh, Wheel of Fortune says to me the past is coming back. Now, of course, none of you have to take anyone back from the past. That's entirely up to you. But I will say there's certainly someone from your past that's wanting to come back in and, and make themselves known. I think they've done a lot of assessment on their feelings. And maybe they lost something really good because they weren't in a place where they were open to accepting the love that you were offering. It could be something like that. They could have been very self-critical or self-conscious or yeah just just not feeling at their best but you know I, something's coming back around <laughs> that's what i got for you this week um thanks so much aries please like share subscribe and i will see you next week for more tarot for taurus take only what resonates release the rest guys all right who's coming in for taurus romantically in the next couple weeks Ooh, they're rich yeah they, they either got a lot of money or a lot of self-respect or both someone who's entrepreneurial or business savvy yeah, major major money contracts major deals for some of you uh, it's not the majority but for a few of you there could be a marriage proposal going from single life into something with with longevity long term uh might involve libra virgo energy it doesn't have to um but yeah a contract of some kind it could be someone that you even started dating, but you actually see a lot of future potential with them. Um, if you're already with a person romantically that you're interested in, they might be signing a new contract for a job that seems to have a lot of, um, I'm hearing leverage, but that's not the word I'm looking for. Um, <laughs> help me out here, spirit. Um, it's on the tip of my tongue. It's lucrative. It's lucrative. All right. So their feelings, their feelings. All right. They think that you might be the the mother of their future child or the father or you know fill in the blank they see you as having a very uh, strong parental nature someone who has a gentle touch someone who offers them good wisdom if uh, you know and i don't mean to be crude at all but if they have mommy or daddy issues there's something about you that helps soothe that it's like they feel loved that if they had abandonment issues there's some sort of certainty or security or loyalty that you've established with them or will soon establish with them where that fear of being abandoned kind of goes away it falls by the wayside um yeah, I mean, I think this person is an open and honest communicator. I think they're busy. I think they have a lot going on. Um, feelings, but I mean, with with the Knight of Swords, there might actually be an important discussion about parents or about family and how that may or may not impact the relationship dynamic that you guys are trying to establish together. Maybe this person doesn't speak to their family and they're going to communicate that to you. Or maybe they're working on stuff and counseling about, again, I, again, I don't mean to be harsh, but sort of the mommy daddy issues type stuff, which everybody's got them, right? I don't mean that in a condescending way, but there's important discussions about family, roots, legacy, ancestry, um, even 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 something to do with property, childhood homes, upbringing, that someone could be selling an old property for a parent and making a lot of money or an inheritance might be a point of discussion here. You know, cancer season, right? All about all about the mom and then the roots and the family uh, in terms of feelings. Yes, I mean, not my most like lovey-dovey feelings, but I do like that there's a comfortable feeling. So that's what I would say. I think this person slowly starts to open up. They might not present like that initially though. And I will say this, remember that we are a mirror for what we receive in relationships. So if you come off as kind of stoic and impenetrable or very like certain topics are off limits, that person might not feel that same sense of ease and opening up to you. So again, like in a sense, like this person is sort of going to mimic the vibe that you put out. So if you present as very warm and, and comforting, then I think this person will feel, you know, comfortable opening up to you. You do have a lot of like mom, dad, father, family cards. So for some of you, maybe this is a discussion about children. If you're already with your person, you know, there's a lot of family stuff going on. So um, even for those who are single and looking at you, 
you know, occasionally you meet someone through a friend of a family or a, through a family friend or you don't understand what I mean? Um, particularly the father or again, something to do with major jobs, major contracts. Someone just landed a really lucky deal or contract at work and that seems very fruitful and maybe you're going to talk about having kids, right? Uh, this, this doesn't necessarily seem like, you know, date night vibes. It seems a little bit deeper than that. It seems like there's more longevity established here already, but... And then potential actions. <laughs> you get the snooze card, snooze fest. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding, Taurus. Uh, but this is a card basically saying relax. Everything is in alignment. There's nothing really that you need to do more of. It's saying just chill, boo. So for, maybe for some of you, if you're watching this and you're like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm single. I have no prospects. Then that's what the action is this week. It's like relax. It's coming in in divine timing. You know, love is always on time, as they say. So yeah, just exhale, exhale. Uh, some of you, you might still be healing from something, right? So, I mean, the Four of Swords comes after the Three of Swords, and the Three of Swords is very frequently a card of, of pain or heartbreak. Now, it's not here, don't get me wrong, but it might be saying this week you're still doing some healing or some mending. Or again, there might be a focus on therapy and um, sort of uh, self-evaluation, self-growth, personal growth in terms of Again, I hate to use that word, but like daddy issues or, or something like that. Something like that is coming through that it's worth thinking over. It's worth sort of doing some some sorting out in your life in terms of what you're looking to manifest and how it shows up to you right now currently. You know, our, uh, something about like old habits die hard. I want to use that phrase. So if you keep manifesting the same type of person that disappoints you, there might be something that you're reaching for that actually isn't for your best and highest good. And so the universe is just saying, are you sure? Do some thinking about that action towards you. All right. So these two cards together speak to me of people who aren't necessarily, bear with me, bear with me, aren't necessarily sleeping together or sleeping in the same bed, but they're absolutely thinking about it. The strength card in itself is a very, um, sexual card it, it, for me as a reader you know it's kind of like that animalistic side that you know the beast we have to tame to fit into society it is also about authenticity and self-expression but yeah in a romance spread it's a very sexual card to me um now it is coming next to sort of like the rest and relax so this could definitely be like sexting um or potentially the idea of making some sort of physical connection or intimacy if you're already with your person it actually kind of goes the reverse to me this says if you've already slept with them and you know it's not that initial kind of like butterfly of, oh my God, it's going to happen. There might be actually kind of a break from sexual activity. I hope that makes sense to some of you. Um, but it, it's not necessarily the physical act. It's more like thinking about it. May, and I know this sounds weird, but even like planning it, like planning a romantic evening. If someone's trying to like wine and dine you or whatever. Um, I do think there's uh, physical affection and physical feelings there. I'm just not sure people are acting on them yet. I also think, too, this is kind of going down another rabbit hole again, not for everybody. This whole idea of talking about our past and maybe unhealthy power dynamics, someone might be revealing in a conversation some very important... Uh, points of healing that they've made in their own journey regarding unhealthy relationships, whether it be with romantic suitors or potential abuse of power in some sort of authority dynamic that really did impact someone's um, psychology and how somehow that like how that translates in the bedroom and, and again that it's kind of like a heady thing but you know our our feelings of being intimate and vulnerable and safe for one or both of you that has been a, a bit of a challenge so there might be more revelations about that coming through in which case someone might be really thinking about that and how sort of moving forward with a physical connection is going to impact your relationship in this person because there might be a need to be a little bit more gingerly and a little bit more taking it slow and be patient with this person until they feel fully comfortable. Yes, because for reals, guys, somebody does have sexual anxiety or issues about impot impotency or, um, again, some something that psychologically it's sort of it tells them to sort of restrain or pull back when they do want to act intimately or physically. There's something that it's, it's a point of healing for them. And so rather than judging them or, uh, you know, uh, punishing them or making them feel less than, I think there, there's a chance to have kind of an open discussion and to be very receptive and nurturing and understanding so that you better know like where they're coming from, essentially. All right, Taurus. Interesting, interesting. Uh, you do have Major Arcana for Aries, Leo, and Libra. It could certainly be any sign, though. 
Those are just the ones that are standing out the most. Thank you. So this is Divine Counterpart, a divine connection sent to you from your angels and lovers. Look at that. A passionate connection, shared visions and values. Awesome. Love it. All right. Please like, share, subscribe, guys. I would really appreciate that. I will see you next week for more tarot. Bye, Taurus. All right, Gemini. Gemini, sun, moon, rising and Venus signs. What's up? Welcome to my channel. Let's see what's coming in for you, Geminis, romantically, romantically. In the next couple weeks, who or what is presenting in Gemini's love life, please? So what's the storyline? What do they look like? Who's coming in? Let's see. Ooh, some they're about they're about to give you an offer. Uh, they're a little shy, but they there's a deep well of feelings there, but they don't like being super vulnerable. This person fears your rejection. So they're trying to come in strategically and like they're trying to figure out what makes you tick so that if they make an offer or ask you out, it really sticks the landing. Someone has been thinking about you. It might be someone from the past, but it doesn't certainly doesn't have to be super watery energy. Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces is especially featured here, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. The hangman says they're waiting to get comfortable, though. They're dreaming about you. They're fantasizing about you. They're thinking about you. They want to make some sort of offer, but they might also be fearing that you're already taken. So some of you, if you are, if you're in a relationship, it actually does seem like there's, I don't want to call it a third party per se, but there's someone else who's like, man, I wish Gemini were mine. Like it has that type of vibe. So let's see. Let's see. Um, feelings. So we already know they have a lot of feelings here. Um, it could be someone from the past that you kind of rejected or friend zoned it as well. Like they reached out to you to make an offer and you said something that kind of turn them off or put the kibosh on it or you just I don't know they're the vibe for them they pick up on on vibes right so it's like you, energy that you were giving off they felt like you were not interested and so they pulled back but they're still thinking about you um so feelings so far it's like they want to move forward with you this person may want to travel to go see you or plan a trip and interesting <laughs> It's like this person is attending your wedding no I'm just kidding <laughs> it kind of does have that vibe though it's like uh, gosh, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It's like very simplistically, it's like movement towards soulmates. So what does that mean? If you're already in a connection, it's like this person might actually be trying to, I hate to say interfere or intervene, intervention. I don't know. I don't know. In fact, that word's coming through for some of you as well. But um this, this could be someone in your friendship group if you already have a person. If you don't have a person, this is someone who wants to... to establish some sort of lasting connection with you. It's like they want to move in and be the soulmate. They want to move in and be the main partner. But that again, these are their feelings. It's not necessarily action. These are very action oriented cards. So like, I think they're wishing that they could come in, but there might be a reason why they can't, particularly if marriage is involved for one or both of you. This cur I will say this person could be in an unhappy marriage and thinking about you. It's possible. Liberation, yeah. So I, I think there is someone, someone is in, in this dynamic isn't totally single. Always in the Gemini reading, guys, right? Hang with me. I'll read it another way for those who are completely single. But yeah, it's almost like as soon as I get out of this marriage, I'm going to come in towards Gemini. Or I'm feeling like Gemini's boyfriend, girlfriend might be breaking up with them. So like I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be ready to pounce as soon as I know that that relationship is over. That's sort of the, the vibe I get. Like there is kind of partnership involved. Others of you feel wise they just very much romanticize the idea of what it would be like to be with you or to live with you uh, I suppose that this person is already in your life and you know you've gone on a few dates you're casually dating whatever they might really kind of like turn uh, I want to say like turn the knob up to 11 or, or uh, what is the word I'm looking for like I don't know, put, put, put their foot on the gas, on the throttle or whatever, and really kind of rev up the engine to have major discussions about like moving in together, which, which seems kind of like rush to be honest. So, I mean, you know, I, I, no shade, no judgment. I mean, if you're open to that, this person seems very much like they want to lock it down and put a title on it with Scorpio vibes or something about this. They like, they like to have control. They want to have a pulse on what it is. They don't want to worry that you're going to get wandering eyes and, and move away or, or be distracted by other things. So it's like they very much want to know that they've solidified their position with you. If that's the case, though, there's something about the way they view you as very independent or very free or like, I don't need anybody or I'm not looking for a commitment at this point. You may be sort of, you know, self-proclaimed bachelor, bachelorette, in which case that intimidates this person because it's like they want to be the one that you choose. And right now, I don't know if you do have options or you're just like, hey, like, I just want to be friends with benefits or whatever. There's something they view you as very much like, 
independent, in, independent. Um, and maybe that has nothing to do with like third party stuff or, or anything. It could just be that you're naturally, and I think that's true for a lot of Geminis, certainly not all of them, especially if you're cuspy with like cancer, but there's something here that's very much like, Oh, it's a good, like maybe a little bit detached. Your love language isn't, I want to be with you all the time. It's like, yeah, cool. Let's hang. It's, it's very like, a, it's very, very much like a friendship dynamic right here. And they're sensing that. And I think this person wants more, though they might be playing it cool because they don't want to overwhelm you and risk losing you. But it's like, they're presenting as the page like, hey, yeah, you're kind of cute. Like, let's hang out. But uh, <laughs> like on the surface of, or on the below the surface, they're just like, oh my God, I'm in love with Gemini and I don't know what to do about it. So not a bad position to be in Gemini. Let's see what their eventual, uh, or sorry, upcoming actions towards you are. What is this person going to do in regards to Gemini? Why do I have a feeling they're just going to fantasize about you? <laughs> the star. Yeah, <laughs> they're literally going to think about you naked, right? I do think it, this is a very strong card of friendship groups and connections and social circles. So I think you guys might hang out socially, but it's it's almost like you don't have exclusivity. And so that could be, this could be someone who's in the friendship zone and you might not even realize that they have feelings for you because again, like they don't wear their heart on their sleeve. They're a little bit guarded, but again, that's anything but the truth. It's like they want to ask you out they want to marry you they want to move in with you or, or you know they just they want to be intimate they want to be one-on-one -on -one with you but it seems like they always tend to catch you in you know very gemini you know groups of people and so like it's never just the two of you very interesting um tell me more <laughs> more potential energies of sexting right the communication card and the naked star card i don't know someone might be plotting or planning a confession that you are the star in their sky that they view you among the rest as as the one that feels very symbolic too it's like there's all these stars in the sky but it's that one that's the one i want this person has certainty like the scorpio energy and, and i'm just saying that because of the king of cups it's like it's fixed it's like i want that one it's not like i want all all of these and I have options it's like this person may present like they probably have a lot of friends too in a big social circle they might they might but the thing is like they've given their heart to you or plan to and hoping that you don't reject them but there's something it's like they're questioning that that you aren't going to view them in the same light and I think that gives them a lot of fear and anxiety again because it could be someone who like they may have flirted with you before and then retracted because because I don't know, they got the sense that you weren't in it and it became too real too quick. And it, they, you know, they put themselves in a vulnerable position, but this person does look back on the past and they're confused because there may also be questioning of like, man, I thought Gemini was flirting with me that night or that night we drank too much. And like I, we kissed or whatever. It's like, they think about that and they're like, what did that mean? Or did I misread the signs or are they taken? Or am I, am I just in the friend zone? I don't know. I, I do like the, ma the magician as a communication card, but with the five of swords they haven't completely figured out how they're going to approach you six of swords to me says there's progress in communication this is like there's a lot of thinking about you and again something about not in a malicious way but strategy like trying to play on like when am i going to get gemini alone or is it an appropriate time to tell them about this thing or is gemini going through too much this week where i should hold off on that conversation it's very very much in their head but i mean this person they're not completely new guys sorry i know some of you are like single and looking this 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 has some a little bit of history to it literally look around your friends group because that's where they're hanging out this week <laughs> in fact they may ask a friend about your your uh, status your relationship status again very scorpio energy to try and get more tea on it right to find out a little bit more so anyway gemini you don't seem to be in a bad position i mean there's someone who definitely wants you i just don't know if you're interested or if you're even aware that this person is interested um so this says stress cleanse and detoxify from unnecessary commitments yeah so you know some of you may have sort of this i don't know if it's a friends with benefit or a connection or it's just sort of like having your cake and eat it too even if it doesn't involve physical stuff it sort of seems like you may have options or again you just have a big group of friends but there's some flirty dynamics with multiple people but then you have this like this is coming through as your person like your person whoever this is this person i don't know if it's who you want to be your person they view you as soulmate uh the divine will pr will provide you with love when you are ready so in some ways, I this almost feels like a cross watch you're reading to me because it's so heavy. I'm like, oh my God, I'm obsessed with Gemini. Like, you know, are they free? Are they single? Do they like me? Do they not? 
I think Gemini is open to the discussion here, but they don't seem to be giving their heart to one person. There's like a playing the field or, hey, let's just be friends or I got to like feel this out more, but I don't want to put a title on it or be too attached to anything. It's There's a detached energy with this like Aquarian star card. So interesting, interesting. Um, yeah, so major arcana, I have Pisces. Again, Scorpio is coming through pretty strong here. Uh, double Aquarius, maybe Aries, Virgo, you know, it runs the gamut here, but that's what I got for you this week, Gemini. Please like share, subscribe, and I will see you soon for more tarot. Thanks, guys. All right. Hey, Cancers. Cancer Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. What is coming in for you romantically in the next two weeks? Let's see. Let's check in with my Cancer gang out there. Happy birthday, guys. I hope you're having an epic birthday season. Let's do it for Cancer. Lo I love my Cancer gang. You guys know. I'm just a little bit biased, right? Just a little bit. No. <laughs> I'm rooting for all the signs, though. All right. What's coming in for Cancer romantically, please? How is this person or these people presenting? Two of Cups. Love it. Knight of Wands. Cancer. Reading done. Are you kidding me? I mean, with Knight of Wands, be careful they're not a player and, you know, hit it and quit it energy. But honestly, this actually, with the Ten of Cups, though, it like adds a weight to it that it's more legit. It's more heavy. This seems like someone who's excited to talk with you and like, it's not player energy because it's the Two of Cups. It's Three of Cups. Like, are you kidding me? This already I'm sold. I almost don't want to pull more cards and jinx it. <laughs> I know your love readings get complicated very quickly, Cancer. No, we're going to pull more of it. Two of Cups, Knight of Wands, someone is passionate about you. Someone is excited to take you out. Someone is expressing how happy you make them feel. And like, I mean, you know, Ten of Cups is kind of like the fairy tale ending or the happily ever after. But with Two of Cups, there, this might be saying it may start off slow, but this could be a person who potentially has some longevity in your life. Or even with the Ten of Cups, it's very family oriented. So you meet, might meet someone who's a friend of the family or through a link of the family. You know, maybe your cousin sets you up on a date with someone. Maybe it's a fire sign, you know, Aries, Leo, Sag. It doesn't have to be, but if it doesn't have to do with a connection through the family, maybe it's someone, you know, your brother works with or whatever. It may also have this vibe of this person feels like home. Like it feels like I know them, like I've known them in a past life. There's something very familiar that makes me feel comfortable and safe. Ooh, Cancer, I love that for you guys. All right, should we do it? Tell me more. <laughs> Tell me more. How's this person feeling? Oh, there it is. Okay. Tell me more. Why are they feeling like that? So this almost says to me they're feeling maybe a little bit stressed or overwhelmed because they met you at an inconvenient time. Um, and that doesn't necessarily have to mean that they're already with someone else or that they're married. It doesn't have to be that. Um, it could be that they just lost their job, especially with the emperor. That to me is a very strong card of boss, authority, work, career stuff. The tower to the five of pentacles, like there could be a financial crisis happening in their life. Um, God forbid this person may have lost their father or again, lost a job or some sort of unexpected tower with an authority figure, um, again, career, money, boss, anything like that. I, every now and then the five of pentacles can represent something with health as well. So this person may just be at a job where they're really depressed or they're really down in the dumps and struggling. Um, this I don't know what to do with this message, but it's like they're being held to a new standard. Maybe they inherited more responsibilities at work or uh, again, if they're if they're helping their family, there might be a lot of stress being put on them by family members, family dynamics, needing to help a sibling or a parent or this and that. And it's really putting them through the ringer. It could be something like that because the feelings for you happen unexpectedly. <clears throat> but they seem to be overwhelmed by other things. They seem to be over overwhelmed or overworked in a connection that isn't necessarily romantic, but they're having to play rescuer. Again, it feels very much like family responsibilities to me. Can I have one more card on that, please? Why? What does this have to do with their feelings for cancer? Okay, because they want to offer you so much more than they can right now, and that's why it presents as this Two of Cups. You're going to have to give them time. You're going to have to be a little bit patient. And I'll be honest, that is not the strong suit of the Knight of, uh, the Knight of Wands. They, they're an action-oriented card. They want to do it, right? With that, if you can be patient and, and sort of, I mean, Cancers don't have a problem with this. Coming from a place of compassion in terms of what this person is going through, they are presenting as a King of Pentacles. They want to offer you the world, but right now they, it's like they have no money in their pocket. Or and, and I don't mean that literally. I'm not saying all of your persons are out of a 
job, but there's something that is financially stressful to them or, again, mental health stuff. They might just be going through sort of a, a crisis in regards to something in their personal life. And so they might not totally want to share that with you. So you might not really have a full pulse on what's going on here. I'm not saying that they're keeping secrets from you, but it's like there is kind of an uber masculine energy with the emperor. It's like, you know, he, he has his steel armor on, right? So there's this, you know, I have it together. Everything's fine. Everything's good. <sighs> It's like Aries Taurus energy with the King of Pentacles. It's like, I want to live an abundant life. I want to provide for my family, for my significant other, my this, my that. I want to be a successful business owner, man, woman, whoever it is. But with the Five of Pentacles, there's more going on below the surface here. So this person, they all, okay, okay. If they're not in crisis mode, and not all of them are, this person may have come out of a relationship where they were married and it didn't go well. And so they might be a little bit shy or apprehensive to commit. But the thing is, I think they want to because I think they unexpectedly have way more feelings for you than they realize. And so they may be shy or apprehensive to it like it makes them vulnerable because it's like they risk losing you or they risk being rejected. And so as much as this person wants to kind of have healthy boundaries and be like, yeah, you know, cancer's cool, whatever. I think on the inside, they're like, oh man, like I kind of like, I want to, I want to make cancer mine, but I don't know if I'm at a good place to do it because I'm still healing from the rejection of our last, our last relationship. Um, that's sort of what this feels like. For one or two of you, there's a lot of storylines coming through. It's always for cancers, I think, because you guys are my, my biggest uh, viewers, which is fine. But then I start getting a lot of storylines. So the last scenario here is you may already be married, Cancer, right? If you've already found your Ten of Cups person, in which case this Knight of Wands may be coming through to cause a little bit of trouble, right? Uh, it could be someone who... Uh, their tower moment is realizing that they might lose you to a husband or lose you to your wife or whatever. And so I get like, there are two very strong male energies here. So whether you're interested in males or females, right? There's, there might be people competing for your attention and one might come out of the blue. And I don't like this story, but I will share it because I see it. It could be that you've been single for a long time. You finally meet someone, you're booed up, you know, you're posting on social with them, whatever. And then this other person comes around like, oh, hey, cancer. And you're just like, what? Like the timing of it is kind of maybe in inconvenient something okay that's important because i've mentioned it twice the timing of this is inconvenient but it doesn't mean it's bad it doesn't mean it's good it's just you know it, it's it's divine timing <laughs> it's uranian it's kind of shocking right again taurian energy um okay so um i don't love this for feelings but i think this person is uh they're not necessarily wearing their heart on their sleeve but i think they're feeling a lot more than uh than they're revealing here future action towards cancer. I almost don't even know who to read for though, because I am sort of getting the sense that there might be two people involved here, but we started off with this lovely energy. So let's keep that going because <laughs> then I, then I got these cards and you know, whatever. No, um, I will set the intention, whatever the universe wants to tell cancer, what is most important for them to know, um, in, in regards to this person's actions, actions towards cancer, um, near future actions. Thank you. Nine, okay. You have the world on a string or you, the world is your oyster. Like that's what I mean. Like you're in demand. So make sure you're choosing someone who you sense the same amount of loyalty, ethics, having a backbone. Like don't accept peanuts or, or minimalize offers. This is like, I, I always say this to you guys, right? Know your worth, know your value. Um, yeah, loyalty is a very, very strong word when it comes here. So if you're dealing with sort of like the jealous ex who only comes back into your life when they think they may have lost you, it's this feels very much dismissive of like, yeah, you had the chance. Sorry. Like, that's sort of what this feels like. Um, and they, okay, there it is. Yeah, it's like someone hasn't fully decided how to move forward with this because they're very cautious to approach you. Um, and I don't know if that's because someone is kind of sort of involved or the, again, it's this idea of like, their last relationship blew up in their face for a lot of the, for whoever this is, right? And maybe it's you too, right? You know, a lot of times we, we uh, manifest and, and have sort of a mirroring back of, of what's going on in our own life. But 
Someone is cautious to approach because they don't want to get their heart broken or they don't want to be put in a position of being rejected again. So yeah, there's a lot of planning. There's a lot of planning going on, but I'll be honest, I don't see a ton of action cards, but you don't seem to be suffering by this. So this doesn't seem like someone you're like obsessed with. It's kind of like, eh, people are going to come and go. Like I'll know the right one when it, when it comes to me and I don't have to fight for it or wrestle for it or convince someone that I'm good enough, right? It's like, you're beautiful just standing on your own. And I think you know that this week. You don't seem to be like in dire straits of like, oh my God, are they going to call me? Because the right person will show up and do that, right? <clears throat> It's like you're waiting for a good one. You may have two, you may have one or two, I'll say that, uh, prospects, but right now you're still catching a pulse on it. And don't get me wrong, it doesn't mean that these prospects are negative or bad or um, shady per se. Someone is being very strategical and practical in how they approach you. And as I said at the beginning, there is something here about it starts off slower than you would like, but it has the potential to become something more. So to be honest, Cancer, this week you may have to be a little bit patient. Communication will come. Communication is coming in. Thank you. Okay. All right, Cancer, let's do uh, an oracle card. What would be significant or important for Cancer to hear in regards to this person? Thank you. Self-limiting beliefs. Negative thoughts are creating a roadblock in your life. Yeah, this has more to do with them than it does you. So just keep that in mind. You may have to be patient. Again, offer a, uh, a, safe, a safe place, you know, hold space for them to sort of... Um, express what's going on in their life because I do sense that this person wants to come in but they have a few more things to sort out you know they might be going through a divorce but maybe you guys still kept in touch maybe you're still friends it's like this person is trying to come in as the king of pentacles but they're not feeling that way this week and so they're slow to approach they are it's Taurian energy it's like you can't force it you can't budget it's you know it's the bull energy it's heavy it's weighted so it's going to move in its own time but they're certainly thinking about how they want to address this or approach it with you all right cancer thanks so much uh, Please like, share, subscribe, and I will see you next week for more tarot. All right, Leo gang. Leo sun, moon rising, and Venus signs. What's good, Leo? Let's see what is coming in for you guys romantically. Your love life. Let's talk about your love life. All right. For Leo, who is coming in? Who or what? What is their energy presenting as in their love life? Let's see. They're coming out on top. They've been through some shit. <laughs> Pardon my French, but like... They have been to hell and back, and they, they live to tell the tale. Tell me one more thing about this person. And this might be you, too. I mean, this is a very strong Leo card for me. Um, someone may come into your life and, and share a, a lot with you. Uh, dare I say they may overshare. Um, but I, I think it comes from a place of them wanting you to understand where they're coming from. Because I don't know if they just got out of a divorce or they lost a job or they lost a parent. Like significant life changes. You know, maybe their living situation changed and they had to move unexpectedly or something about that. Something about that. Hopefully it's not like unexpected children, right? With, with some random partner. No, I don't, I don't think that's the case, but it did kind of come up with the sex card. So um, hold on. Give me one second here. <clears throat> You know, this comes through as very empowered. That's that's the first and primary message here is that this person has been to hell and back, but they are a warrior. They have amazing amounts of tenacity and, and I will say self-love, devotion and dedication to making themselves a better person, not getting stuck in a rut of like, oh, woe is me, life is miserable, nothing ever works out. It's like, you know, when life tests them, they, they show up and, and make good on, on their promise to themselves to, to get out of a tricky situation. Um, this person may, and I don't know if I love this message, but I sort of get it. This person may have done a lot of work on themselves for you. It's almost like if you were sort of like the... I don't want to say goalpost, but something about it. It's like they knew they had to make major changes if they wanted to be with you. So maybe they have had to overcome an addiction or go through sobriety, or maybe they've had to really show up and, and change their ways in order to come through and, and present you with some sort of offer that is enticing and alluring and dazzling. It's like they it feels very much like Jack Nicholson. And uh, what is that movie? As good as it gets. It's like, you make me want to be a better man. <laughs> And so hopefully they did it for themselves, no, not just you, right? Because, you know, I don't even have to give you that lecture, but you know what I mean? Um, I do like their energy so far. What are their feelings for Leo? 
they were they are picking their moment. They are waiting for the right time because they, metaphorically they may have put you in an awkward position or vice versa. It feels like uh, what is that expression? Um, it feels like they were quote unquote put in jail. Um, and hopefully that's hopefully that's not literal for most of you. It's like. They got themselves into a tricky position with you. It's like they... <laughs> Stop with the double entendres, Leo. Oh, my God. Okay, sorry. Let's let's refocus my energy. I, I don't know why I'm in, like, a goofy mood right now. Um, <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry, Leo. Give me just one second. Uh, tricky positions with Leo. Okay, here we go. Um, it feels like they may have done something and they ended up in the doghouse. Uh, and so they have to get back into your good graces. And that's what this could have been as well. A tower moment with you. You guys may have broken up. It, may, it could have been like the last or final straw with you. And you're like, you know what? And then the thing is, though, they seem to be coming back in. And I, I will say in a strong way. I don't necessarily think this per person is sort of um, faking it or there's a better word for that. Like, um, like pulling the rug out from underneath you. No, what is the expression? It's like pulling the wool over your eyes. That's what I don't think this person is trying to fool you or trick you. It's like, I think there was a lot of shame or guilt or, or negative feelings about themselves because they let you down. And so I think they're trying to, I don't know if it's make good on the promise to you or to show up again as, as a better person for you to try and win you back. There is something kind of romantic and poetic of, of trying to get back into your good graces and win you back. Now, obviously that's entirely up to you. I, I don't know if you want this person back. I don't know the severity of what happened. This tower may or may not have to do with you. Um, so if this person is brand new, I will say this person shares a lot of overwhelming information with you. Um, this person is, is very quick to, to tell you, I don't want to say about their sob stories. That's not what I mean, but they're, this person is very open and transparent about their past. And, the, you know, their past is not all sunshine and rainbows. Maybe they did do time, right? There could be something about, again, like, uh, drug issues or or I, I don't think it's abuse issues in terms of them being that way anyway it does it doesn't matter but ultimately this person has a lot to share but they might be it's not that they're afraid to share it with you they are afraid of your reaction and if that's going to make them less desirable in your eyes this person very much lives in their head they're very aware of their faults. Um, but I, to be honest, I do like their transparency. Again, I don't know what went down between you guys, but they might be waiting for a response. If this person has already reached out to you to try and make amends or ask you out after after a, a date that, that got very heavy very quickly, this person might be kind of in wait thinking like, oh man, did I miss my chance with Leo? Because they're feeling like you're keeping them at arm's length or you're keeping them on red, some, something like that what is the feelings here? And then we'll, we'll pull actions. What is the feelings here? Yeah, the feeling is they want to move towards you, but you guys, I, I don't know, take this with a grain of salt, but there's something that's like, there's too, something too similar about you guys. You both might be experiencing the same struggle or frustration, especially in regards to career and money right now. And so it's like neither person can kind of take on the responsibility of, like floating the other person along for a bit like you might be going through financial hardships individually and so maybe you're kind of at a place where it's like even if you do see feelings for this person or like them there's something where you don't you don't see it as being a good or a viable choice for you right now or again there's fear regarding you guys have already been through something that was fairly life altering or earth shatter shattering or again poor communication trying to get back in someone's good graces this is a card of struggling about communication it's like we're trying to get on the same page and we just can't seem to do it there you may uh, you whoever so, this person may have broken your trust issues Again, they're, they are presenting as, it doesn't feel gaslighting to me. I, I don't know. I do think this person is making significant strides to, to get better, to be better. But, and I understand though, realistically, you know, based on something that went down between you guys, they, like, I don't know, these cards are not romantic and sexy. They're very much waiting for you to toss the ball back and start the communication. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. So can I ask, what are Leo's feelings for this person? And do keep in mind, this could go vice versa. But, okay, they're saying do actions for us. All right, so this person we're talking to. Oh, talking about, sorry. It's funny. There we go. It's like, oh, it's a crosswatcher reading. All right. 
potential action towards Leo in the next couple weeks. Are they going to do anything significant here? Yeah, they're, they're knocking on your door. It's the person from the past who wants to get closure on something. It could just come in the form of an apology. You know, this it does, guys, like, I know it's not for everyone. It's symbolic. It's like a metaphor. It almost feels like this person did kind of go to prison or they had to kind of go away for a while and face their karma, karmic debt, something to do with that. And now it's like they're coming through and they're on their apology tour because they know in some ways they like effed you over or they burned you or they're trying to make something right. They're trying to offer you the goodness in their heart. But it, maybe it's kind of for you, like you've seen the error their ways. And for, for some of you, it's like, there's no going back. Like I already saw that and you can't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. <sighs> I don't know if you're going to take this person up on their offer. I think for a lot of you, it's too little, too late. I also think though, this person wants you to know that they really have changed something that they were once committed to or a lifestyle that maybe wasn't healthy or a behavior that wasn't healthy. It, it, it was it led to their demise and so they've had to pick themselves back up and do a lot of work on themselves and I think they want you to know like I'm not perfect but I'm getting better you know th there is something about confessing about what really brought them down to their knees this person may have actually become very spiritual or very religious they could have had like a a you know spiritual awakening or a come to Jesus moment because their life was just in a, in a really bad way um, how is Leo feeling about this person because you're, yeah, you're kind of keeping them as arm's length. The, the King of Swords can be a little bit icy. I think you're contemplating things, but you undeniably are looking back on the past and these sort of like gray clouds overhead, thinking there was a lot of shadiness. There was a lot of confusion. There was a lack of transparency or a lack of honesty. And for a lot of you, again, this week, it feels like you're just trying to cut drama out of your life. Like if it's not contributing to your life, I, I don't, I don't, I I don't even know if you're responding. I think you're thinking about the past, but it's it's a very cool detachment. Because, I mean, look, guys, where are the cups, right? Where's the love? If anything, this might be an apology, and maybe, you know, that's, that's sort of the closure that they're hoping to get. And maybe you're like, thanks. And then that's it. Like, so again, these energies change. You know, I, I do these weekly readings. But yeah, right now, it seems a little bit... Yeah, you don't seem certain about this. and Or again, vice versa. If this is you coming, trying to get back in someone else's good graces, they don't know what to do with you right now. Because there is a lot of pain. Something about this, this interaction brings up a lot of pain from the past. So this says obsession. Focusing too much on one situation, the need to take a step back. Maybe this person isn't coming in at a convenient time, you know? Even if you haven't been in touch in years, it could be this person comes back around and you yourself may be in some sort of, you know, mini crisis or, or just at a tricky time in your life. Maybe you already have someone in your life. I don't know. This is acceptance. Accept the past and current situations. Work through the issues grace gracefully. Interesting. For some of you, too, there might be some internal work going on with a family member or a friend or an ex who has passed on. I'm not predicting that, but if there, if you know who that is, right, you may have some baggage that needs, and I hate to say baggage, but some trauma that needs to be worked through on a more like kind of psychological level to release something that you've been holding on to that you don't need to anymore. Uh, acceptance and obsession says you, there might be something about the past that you're still holding on to that we have to like, you know, cancer season, the water stuff, all about the past. We ne might need to like flush it out of our system so that we can thrive again and feel better about ourselves and, and move on with our life. Woof, Leah, this was a heavy one. All right, that's what I got for you guys. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, and I will see you soon for more tarot. Thanks. All right, what's up, Virgo? Virgo, sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs. Let's see what's coming in for you guys romantically. Love life. Romance messages for Virgo, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Here we go for Virgo. Whoops. All right. How is this person presenting? He had something flip over in the deck. Let's see. Ooh. <laughs> I'll be honest, guys. The first thing I heard is like a reunion with like a snake. Someone who's a little bit, uh, I don't know, a little bit sly. A little bit sly. Let's see. I do see the strength card showing. It may involve a Leo. Judgment, Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like someone might be coming back around to make you an offer. Um, this, this almost feels like a separate message the way it came out. So five of swords says there's a lot of confusion over something. <clears throat> yeah. The lovers, someone maybe had different options or was, 
I'm, I'm sort of getting like the idea of caught between a rock and a hard place. It's like they had important decisions to make of if they could feed an energy of love. And they, ch okay, yeah, they chose to walk away or you, right? You can always invert the storyline here. But ultimately, what are they headed towards? Yeah, so like, I think if you were to revisit this for most of you, if any of this is resonating, it would end up with kind of similar energy, more conflict, because someone is still apprehensive or unsure. Like, sometimes this is like the do I stay or do I go card, right? It just feels very much like tiptoeing away but not wanting to cause a ruckus so that if this person wants to come back into your life you know they didn't make a dramatic exit it was just kind of like oh yeah i got busy it's like yeah but they got busy for three weeks with someone else do you know what i mean like eh, i don't love that message so you know what virgo we're gonna pull new cards for you um that that just felt separate i don't i don't know why um but yeah let's uh let's reset our energy and if, if the same message comes out again, fine, that's that's the true message. But it's just the, the way they flipped out, it felt very much like, tell them this, then the other one. So we're going to do that for Virgo. All right, so let's reset our energy. Set the intention to get messages for their best and highest good regarding their love, their love life, romantic life, etc. All right, so how is this person presenting? Let's get a little more clarity, a little more details. All right, so, <laughs> so there's you. Might be dealing with another Virgo or a Cancer or a Pisces. All right, so you have three major arcana. Very spiritual cards with these two. A lot of wisdom, that Virgo-Pisces access. It's like I live to serve, right? In, in a practical way with Virgo and in a more like spiritual, can't we all just get along sense with Pisces. Sometimes the, the word sacrifice comes through uh, with the hanged man. It's like needing to release something even though it's hard. Needing to put on your game face. The chariot is very much like be brave, you know, tenacity. It's Cancerian energy, but it's leaning more into that, hey, you have a hard exterior, you have a hard shell for a purpose, right? Right? It's like you, you can go through a lot, like the world hasn't broken you yet. Now, in theory, I'm pulling cards about your person, but because the Virgo card came out first, if you're not dealing with a Virgo, that in itself might be sort of a mirror reflection of something you guys were both going through. This could have been a situation where it was like, I want to, but I can't, or the feelings are there, but the practicality of us getting together and building a life together or dating, something about it just, <clears throat> it wasn't working out at the time very likely because there's it's like there's bigger fish to fry it's like we both have a mission in life right now and maybe this relationship was more or less getting in the way or detracting from sort of your overall goal maybe it was a health goal a career goal a, you know something to do with family matters or family issues there is sort of like a again caught between a rock and a hard place and that and maybe this is an entirely different message this one is a little bit softer it does so far anyway it doesn't have sort of the complications of the last storyline but you know you might, you might be dealing with different, um, what's a good word for it? Different, I want to use the word like extremities of the same situation, but like varying degrees, like, you know, that sort of, that sort of thing. All right. Tell me more. So feeling sector, it's sort of like this person is blocked from, from their feelings or they're trying to power through or stomach through and, and maybe put their feelings aside because again, it's like they have something very important they need to accomplish here. Um, and yeah, and it does involve sort of a little bit of travel or needing to connect with other people. And so they can't pour all their time and energy into a love connection. But I think they do think about it. Um, now, if for those Virgos who are completely single, right, and like nobody from the past or etc., it's almost like there's a period of wait and you might meet this person when they are traveling through town or if they're moving to, you know, your city state location. If you go on a work trip with these two cards, something involving travel, you might meet them in, in some sort of capacity involving work as well. Like, you know, a friend of a friend or a friend of a colleague. So that, that's one scenario here, too. I don't know. The hangman, though, has like a yearning. Like, I, I want to and I'm dreaming about it, but I'm not necessarily taking action on it yet. The feeling sector has action cards, but again, what are they pouring their actions into? Um, I, I, you know, I always hope to see romantic cards in the feeling sector. This is a little bit like someone is, what is a good word for it? Um, putting on a good face, putting on a good face. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit more detached. It's a little bit more cold. It's a little bit more sterile. It doesn't mean that there was, was 
wasn't once passion there, but it's, it's almost like this person is trying to get their life in order. They're trying to get organized. They're trying to keep their, you know, scales balanced, so to say, and not have it tip in one direction over the other. And I think this person, something about the emotions feel messy to them. It, it feels messy. And so it's easier to just remove it and not get too involved. Um, but I think they do think about it. I think they do think about it. I think they... They think about how they would kind of uh, get back with you or initiate a conversation again, but let's see if they're actually going to do it. What is their potential action here towards Virgo in the coming weeks? What 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 action might they take? Oof, cold as ice, guys. Ooh, Virgo, I'm so sorry. It's frozen. Like, channels of communication are frozen. There isn't much happening. Uh, this represents to me, though, a thawing. Uh, things are going through transformation. I don't know why, like, I, I think this is just the way my eye views it, but I always see a scorpion in, in this card. So to me, with scorpion, Scorpio energy, and again, you don't have to be dealing with one, but it's almost like things are in flux and major transformation is occurring under the surface, but it's covered in snow. So you're not necessarily seeing that, and it's a slow transition. It's it's not an immediate overnight tower moment. It's like things are things are happening under the surface, but the season you're in right now might be a little bit frosty with this person. So, you know, you can sit there and wait and yearn for them, or you can live your life, right? You can, you can go out and try and mix it up and do something new and take your mind off of this, and, you know, plenty of fish in the see mentality right and if as i as the pisces card is here and if this person comes back great but right now the action card is not yeah it's like there's confusion or a lack of clarity about what happens and that seems to be the biggest action is one or both of you is still kind of reflecting back on the past there is something about reflection and mirror images going on here um if you, in some ways like i don't overuse this word but it does kind of feel a little bit like twin flamey right um but yeah, not a lot of action. I think if anything, this person sort of looks back and regrets or feels shame or feels guilt or worries that they hurt you or something like that. Um, I think they are committed to making changes in their life. And, and I do like this. I think they are committed to making changes for themselves, which is really what has to happen. You know, you can't change for another person and have that be sustainable. They have to do it out of self-love and out of wanting to make major changes for their life. There could have been issues with um, some sort of addiction sometimes with, with Neptune Pisces energy coming through there, a, a bad habit or, or uh, a behavior that was healthy or talk or I'm sorry, unhealthy or toxic or just wasn't, wasn't putting them in a good place to be in a relationship. This person might also be very committed to their work, <coughs> which, excuse me, is not a bad thing, but it's almost like they're throwing themselves into work in an avoidant way so they don't have to deal with other stuff going on. It's sort of like nose to the grindstone, but they might also be sort of swallowing a lot of emotions and not actually processing them because that that's still very much coming up in something that needs to be healed. And, and I'm almost seeing like a towel being wrung out with like water. It's like we have to get rid of the old water because it's getting like, you know, still water. It's like heavy. It smells. It's like we, we got to wring it out and keep things fresh and light. And this person, if it, it feels very weighted with negative emotions regarding the past or past actions or, or, you know, it does take two to tangle. I'm not saying this is completely on them, but there is something about the past where it keeps tripping them up and I have a feeling because of all these mirror twin things it probably does you too so I mean there's nothing stopping you from reaching out and getting communication but if I'm being completely honest and I'm a big advocate for speak your truth self-expression ask for clarity if you get it great if you don't will you still have clarity on the person right if they're not giving that to you <clears throat> but here's the thing if you're in a good enough place where you're just living your life and you can still be happy without this sort of thing weighing you down energetically, especially mentally, of this kind of like cerebral sword energy, I would not... I wouldn't poke the bear this week because it does, it seems like if you do get communication back, it's going to be frosty. It hasn't, you know what I'm saying? Like it's cold, it's rigid, it's hard. With these two cards, it feels very much like this person is still in the thick of their their kind of journey to, to find new happiness or, or to get back on their feet, whatever it is. So the energy hasn't changed significantly enough where you're going to get this new answer or this new person or whatever. So I would push pause on this and do your best to just keep living your life. And keep in mind, guys, these are weekly readings, right? Energy always changes. It's in flux. But yeah, this week it just feels like maybe pursue something else. Um, if you're not already dealing with a Taurus, Libra, or Virgo, maybe Cancer, though those might be something strong to pursue as, as something new. <clears throat> if one of those is your past person, then again, you know, up to you how you want to proceed. But yeah, I think there's sun at the end of the tunnel here. But it's a very future-oriented card. Leos tend to not be super stuck on the past, right? It's all about fire signs in general. It's future-oriented. It's seeing the possibility of what's ahead. 
All right. Thanks so much, Virgo. See you next week for more tarot. Hello, Libra. How's it going? Let's see uh, what is coming in for my Libra gang. Libra sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs. Romantically, in your love life, in your dating life, in your sex life. All those good things. What's coming in for Libra? How is this person presenting? Who's going to be around them in the next week or so? Ooh, someone who's anxious to make an offer to you. Okay, now this is an apology. <laughs> this is someone who's feeling a lot of guilt. They're trying to heal something. They probably misspoke or misstep or gave you a false impression or, I don't know, maybe you went through a breakup and now they're regretting it. Uh, possibly Sagittarius or Pisces. It doesn't have to be. It could be any sign. But yeah, this is someone who it's like they stay awake at night with remorse or regret or guilt, feeling like they, they should have treated you better. Now, are they actually trying to get with you? Is there feelings there or is there just guilt and shame about how they treated you? Let's find out. Uh, what are their actual feelings for, for my Libras out there? Now, if you are single, completely single, don't want anyone back from your past, I mean, I'm not saying the person from the past isn't going to want you, but um, this could also indicate that you, someone is coming into your life that you don't see coming with the moon card, um, and it's probably someone who's going through a stage of healing, maybe physical, mental healing, emotional healing, maybe they're fresh off a divorce or a breakup, um, so they might be slow to offer something, which, to be honest, is is in, a, in alignment for me, you know, anyone who just got out of a, a relationship, if they're rushing in, that almost feels very much like, um, you know, the word, what is the word, uh, rebounding, right? So I, I don't think they're kind of come in, you know, guns a blazing. I, I think they're doing some time to, to reflect and heal. Um, and so to be honest, I like that good, you know, good on this person for not rushing in and jumping in to like not feel the pain or the, the wounds associated. It's like, we, we have to, we really have to feel that with the moon card, you know, life is not all sunshine and rainbows. We, we got to take breaks and, and do some healing work. And that might be what this new person is doing. All right. So let's keep going. Feelings for Libra. How do they feel? All right. So there's confusion here. Ooh, yeah, they hurt you. <laughs> or vice versa, you know, it could go vice versa. That wants to come out as well, too. Yeah, so here's the thing. With the Hierophant and the Queen of Wands, sometimes, depending on what it's near, the Queen of Wands can be the other woman or the other person, if you will. It's not so much a gender thing. Um, so unless you strongly relate with fire energy or your person, maybe, I don't know, there's just something here about committed but not committed or questioning a commitment. You know, the three of swords can be third party stuff. And again, there's like this, I sh should have acted in a different way. And now I look back and regret or why did I do that? Or why didn't I say that? So I'm not saying it has to be cheating energy for all of you, but it, I don't know. Honestly, the general storyline here is wandering eyes. I think there was definitely enthusiasm in the bedroom, like a lot of sexual connection and passion, probably a very charismatic person. But if, if, and again, it might go in reverse depending on who's who, the Hierophant is Taurian energy. It wants to, you know, have roots in the ground. It wants to build something committed with longevity. It wants something rather traditional, maybe a little bit more conservative. It wants to make the history books, right? You know, <laughs> it's sort of like one brick at a time to build the estate, essentially, right? Hierophant energy. But with Queen of Wands, it's like, if it's not fun, with these cards anyway, if it's not fun, I'm going to dip out or I'm not going to be as committed because I'm not certain that this is the my my one and only, right? I might be playing the field. I might still have hangups on my ex or this or that. The Three of Swords says there was a lot of pain points regarding someone's past storyline. And this is coming up in the feelings. So it's, it's ironic. The story I shared about this person is, is, you know, a new person is maybe doing their healing before they come in. Maybe this person didn't though, if these are two different storylines. So maybe this person was rebounding and did rush to jump into bed with you as, as a way to forget their pain. And then in the process of that, they hurt you because they actually weren't ready to do something very committed. Oh, Libra, you have some of the more challenging readings. I can't lie. I never aim for that. You and you and cancer, you always have very challenging readings. So what is this person's future action? And then we're going to pull cards on something new that could be positive that might be coming in. <clears throat> so this person, again, I, I don't know if it's new, but even if it is, it, it looks complicated. Even if a, a person comes in, it seems like they still have either some healing to do with their ex or, or their... 
I don't know, they might not even be fully divorced yet and sort of, you know, putting themselves out there to meet and mingle new people. And, and if they're not sharing that truth, right, it, it could lead to something disastrous where you thought this person was single and they're not. And I mean, it's possible, right? Maybe some of you flat out know this person is married, right? And, and even if that's the case, though, they have severe guilt and anxiety that they're going to be caught or that they shouldn't have done that thing with you or, or vice versa, right? It's, ugh, it feels like a slippery slope here. So this person's actions towards Libra, please. The King of Swords. Not the most lovey-dovey card, but it is a communication card. But it's very much like calling a spade a spade. It's like black is black and white is white. There's no area or shades of gray for, for the King of Swords. Um, it, it, it's sort of addressing an uncomfortable truth, but... It, it's rooted in essentially like justice. It's rooted in doing what's right, even if it makes people uncomfortable. Yeah, interesting. So there's there's two kings here. I think you actually may initiate some sort of conversation with this person to get clarity. Yeah, because you're still wanting a love offer from them. Oh, and yeah, they've walked away. Or they, they, there's, again, Saturn energy with the Eight of Cups. It's like there's severe restrictions and, and limitations that this person is able to offer you at this time. I think you hold them in high regard, though, for a lot of you. And I mean, I think it's there's probably mixed emotions there. I think some days you think they're going to be the hero and choose you, and other days you're very much like, what, you know, what an a-hole. Like, why am I not good enough? And it has nothing to do with you not being good enough. You met a person who doesn't know what they want, and like, I'm going to say it like this is going to offend the cross watchers or whoever this is, right? I mean, for some of you, the cross watchers, this is about you, Libra, right? Especially, <laughs> I hate to make it a gender thing, but Libra men, oh my gosh, right? you can be very convincing, very, um, well, there's a better word for that. Um, anyway, anyway, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's Saturn, it's like limitations. I think some days you, you put this person on a pedestal and like, oh my God, they're my king of cups, they're going to offer me the world. And um, sorry, what I was going to say though is, in, I, I hate to use this because it's kind of harsh, but it's like this person seems a little bit cowardly. Um, instead of maybe stepping up and owning the the mistakes they made and everybody makes mistakes right no no nobody is clear of that but instead of owning it it's almost like they're looking to you to fix them and heal them and it's almost like you're it's like you're a drug they just need a hit of you and then they can go back to their wife and child and family and and then forget about you for a bit but then they miss you and then they come back and it feels very much like there's an open door policy there but you sort of are getting used in the process and i don't like that obviously right like you deserve a king of cups who knows what they want and, and is going to pour their time and attention into this relationship and and here's the thing it starts with self-love and this person has a lot of like inner demons um where they don't feel good enough and so the praise and attention from one person it's never enough you know they because their cup is empty they lack self-love so they go to multiple people to kind of again get that hit of love and time and affection and and again keep in mind is that you libra it's always good to be self-aware and, and pose that question Again, I'm not trying to shame or blame anyone here, but yeah, it's like both people are from are operating from a place of lack of of love or lack of self self respect anyway. And so yeah, it's like I think you're very at least at one point in time you were very willing to take this person back, and it could be that you initiate some sort of final kibosh on this where, where you sort of close the door and again addressing the elephant in the room is like hey this can't keep going on because like i really like you like i i would bend over backwards to make this work but you are a little bit stoic and every time i think there's potential here you end up walking away and like it feels exhausting um especially for you but i, I don't see lots of change occurring in the next couple weeks in terms of this turning into the happily ever after i mean look at these cards libra for, for those who, who kind of know tarot or are kind of familiar there's a lot of apprehension. There's a lot of fears. Again, there's a lot of things that are just keeping this kind of in flux, but nothing is really changing. And to be honest, I see you stepping up to do the right thing at, from a place of self-love. Like, you know what? I deserve more than this. So like, this is it. If you want me, tell me. If not, like, peace, I'm out. It feels very much finalized in terms of, I will say, the air signs stepping up to, to say something um, because it's not right. It can't go on forever. <clears throat> Help me out here, spirit. What what would help Libra to, to know or to focus on for Libra? Thank you. 
So this says spread your wings. Confidence that leads to freedom and growth. That feels very King of Swords. Liberating yourself from something where it almost feels like you're playing caretaker. Um, if Libra were to uh, disconnect from this connection and go for something new. Yeah, more messages coming in. I almost think this is like a get the hell out of Dodge card sometimes too. It's like move on. <clears throat> Eights are all about freedom and liberation. Yeah, I think this is going out and getting back out there, flirting. Um, there could be a Leo that has their eye on you or vice versa. There could be a new Leo coming in. Someone who's very pretty. They're very dazzling. But I think there's, there's substance there. There's something more solid than just kind of this flighty in and out thing. I, I would say something new. Page of Wands is an excellent date card. Get yourself back out there. <clears throat> Fire signs are looking good for something brand new. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. All right, Libra, thanks so much. I will see you next week for more tarot. What's up, Scorpio? Scorpio, sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs. Let's talk about your love life. Let's see what's coming in romantically, sexually, whatever wants to come through for Scorpio. What is their romantic life looking like in the next couple weeks? What's going on for Scorpio, please? Messages for their best and highest good. How is this person presenting? Ooh, they're dazzling. Ooh, I like that. What about this King of Pentacles? Ooh, um, <clears throat> I do like this. I actually wanna pull a little bit more on this. This feels like someone is trying to get your attention. Uh, it feels like they go to bed at night or they, they go home at night after whatever, interacting with you, seeing you, messaging you, thinking about you. And it's almost like they're preparing themselves to make a very big offer. If you're already with your person and the vibe is right, this could be someone planning a proposal or planning on asking you to move in with them or some sort of major change. But with the King of Pentacles, it's longevity, right? It's like they, they want something that's going to make the history books. It's Tory and energy. So that's very important in terms of establishing roots, right? The root of a tree and, and growing, you know, on the up and up. That's what this feels like. Um, there's a lot of pride here. And, and I don't mean that in the negative connotation. I, you know, it's Leo energy, so it is very much like being seen. But I almost think that's how they feel about you. I think they see you as, for some of you, if this is new, it's almost like this person may question if, if you're out of their league. But ironically, their energy is coming through as King of Pentacles. So it's like the King of Pentacles kind of deserves the best of the best. And I don't know, lucky, lucky for you, Scorpio, this King of Pentacles has their eye on you. With the hangman, they might be picking their moment. Or, you know, like anybody, just because they're the King of Pentacles, whatever that means, you know, living an abundant life, you know, having a good sense of stability, self-love, whatever, you know, insecurity does happen to this person because they're only human. So I think sometimes they, they put you on a pedestal and see you as maybe out of touch or out of reach or questioning if, if you're having the same sort of feelings of, of affection for them. I, I think... I, sometimes the King of Pentacles, it feels like he's about to make an offer, like he's dangling a coin, but he's, he's wanting to make sure like whatever he quote unquote invests in, whether it's financially, emotionally, physically, whatever, whatever he invests in, it's not really a fly by night operation. A lot of thought and, and planning has gone into it. And I don't mean that in a creepy way, but I mean, I guess for you, if this offer is coming to you, it's good to know that like th this person is making a big gesture that they've thought a lot about. So um, it already feels like the feelings are there. I think if anything, they're questioning if you're feeling the same way. Um, some of you may have already connected with this person and, and I don't know, maybe, I don't know if you friend zoned them or what. I, I don't know if that's true yet. So we're going to, we're going to keep going. So tell me a little bit more. I do think this person would put a lot of effort in, into making you happy and making you feel loved and, and comfort. Um, and, you know, it's Taurian energy, so sensuality, right? Taurus, Scorpio stuff. It's very physical, right? It's all about the body and good sex, <laughs> right? So how is this, this person feeling towards Scorpio? How are they feeling? What's going on in the feeling sector in regards to this person and what they're feeling for Scorpio? Oh, so they feel iced out by you. But I also think this card, it's funny, somebody else got this card. I think it was maybe, uh, was it Virgo? I always see a scorpion in that card. So it's always like all they see is you, right? In, in sort of like these rolling hills of snow, the one thing that stands out is is that scorpion energy. Um, I don't. I think it's just me as a reader. I just, I, I always see a Scorpio in that, or a scorpion, I should say. So I, I don't know. I also think too, you know, if we're just kind of reading into the Scorpio energy here, their feelings are starting to change and transform. It's almost like, especially with the sort of the storyline of longevity, over time, their feelings have become more intense, but it, it's presenting as chilly. So that's, that's interesting to me. I don't totally know, because it, it might be hidden feelings. 
with the Queen of Cups, or they may be sensing that you've closed yourself off, or that you like they may be sensing chilly vibes from you, and then they're I don't know they're that might be why they're questioning things. You know, with the Hangman, that might be why they've pumped the brakes, or they're not coming in with the sort of you know King of Wands. Let's be passionate and go on adventures, and you know, self-expression is very important with the King of Wands. It's it's more subtle, you know. It's Taurian energy, and I'm not saying it has to be a Taurus, but it's feminine. It's receptive. It's a little bit softer. This person isn't going to be, you know, jumping up and down in your face. It's like it's a little more strategic and, and subdued. It's a little bit more restrained. It's a little bit more cautious, right? They may be questioning if you're even available, too, to, for some of you, depending on... What's going on with this Queen of Cups? I mean, they're they're all up in their head about you. Queen of Cups says there's a, there's a lot of feelings, but you may be coming off as chilly or unavailable. Can I get one more clarifier on this? Like, what are their feelings for Scorpio? The Fool. Yeah, I, so there's that fire energy. I actually do like seeing that. Like, in a perfect world, this this would be an amazing, uh, you know, storybook ending. You know, the Knight of Wands would ride in triumphant, make their feelings known, and, you know, you would, you would ride off into the sunset together. This feels very much like storybook. I, you know, I don't claim to know everything about your scenario. I can only tell you what I see in the cards. This is sort of the idealized romance uh, fantasy tied to whatever they're feeling for you. But that's not the reality of what's going on here. Um, and I, I'll be honest, I don't know why. These two cards, there's something getting in the way because one or both of you has a lot of anxiety or fear, guilt. Um, yeah, anxiety is big here. Uh, regarding this connection... Uh, it's possible with the King of Pentacles, that is kind of my quote unquote husband card. So, you know, if you're not, I don't know, I'm just making sure like no one here is married and this is becoming like a, a side, a side piece or a third party situation. I don't know if I necessarily sense that. Um, I think in theory, you know what, it, for some of you, it's like this person moves too slow. You're like, let's just get this done. You know, Scorpio really is a Mars ruled sign. So obviously you guys have to get comfortable. And with the Queen of Cups, it's like psychically the vibe has to be right. You have to feel like this person is worthy of your trust and loyalty and time. So if you're open to this, it might be that you're looking to expedite the situation and they're very slow to approach with, you know, I, I would say this is the slowest moving energy, right? It's Earth. And yet the feelings here associated with you are like you're the prize. Like they, they put you up on a pedestal. They dream about you. You are their, you know, story storybook ending, the fantasy, all, all the things. So are you not available? Are you not looking for a commitment? That could be too, because here's the difference. Again, King of Pentacles is like, let's make the history books, you know, generally speaking, more traditional, earthy, conservative, like, you know, values marriage. It could be some of my Scorpios are like, I'm never getting married again. Or, you know, I'm just looking to casually date. I don't want to put a title on anything. Like, you know, friends with benefits is my jam right now. Whatever, right? There could be a scenario where Scorpio isn't necessarily committed to this. Um... Or again, it's like it moves too slow for you. Something about your love language doesn't jive with them. Now, I mean, earth and water speak the same language very much. Again, feminine, receptive, kind of, uh, I hate to say caretaker energy, but, you know, lovey-dovey, you know, cuddle energy. Um, so I don't, I, I don't really know what's tripping this up, but I mean, needless to say... The feelings are complicated, but I will say I do like that the Queen of Cups is showing up in the feelings, but it's someone who's very protective of their feelings, right? It's Cancerian energy, so right, you know, it's we're in Cancer season, no less. It's that, that hard exterior, right? The crab shell, but you know, everybody knows, right? They think it's a big secret. Cancers are like little cuddle bugs, right? They're just, they're so soft and sensitive. They're, you know, they're soft underbellies. So they present as very much like cold exterior, you know, leather jacket wearing, you know, nothing's going to get, but that's not true like and I'm not saying cancers present as that but I, I think you know depending and this is probably you I'll be honest you know Scorpios can have a very tough exterior as well too and I think once you have established some sort of trust and, and language of love with Scorpio you know they get more comfortable and then can be vulnerable around you I think you guys thrive on that exchange of deep feeling and deep emotions but you're very selective and choosy with with who you share that with right there's there can be a secretive side to Scorpio right so yeah I don't know it's like the the 
the pacing of this is weird to me. It's like one person is very slow and one person is very fast. Or again, it has to do with like one person is very committed. I want you to be my husband, wife, etc. And one person is like, Psh, I want to play the field. Something about that is going on. And again, for one or two of you, maybe there is some third party interference. You do kind of have a lot of people cards showing up. So maybe you haven't decided who you want. All right, I'm rambling. Sorry, Scorpio. <laughs> so whoever this is, whoever showed up first, this King of Pentacles energy who's dreaming about you, who's gaga over you, Scorpio, what is their action towards you in the future? What is their action towards, towards you in the near future, please, as much as we're allowed to know? Future actions <clears throat> for Scorpio. What is this person planning on doing if take or taking any action? They're sentimentalizing you. They're already nostalgic over you because there's something about like they fear like they've lost out on an opportunity with you. Maybe they were too slow to move. Does that make sense to anyone? It's almost like they're trying to manifest you back. So I don't know if this is new, Scorpio. Like, if this person is still in your life and you communicate, but you're not, not necessarily dating, this feels very much like a person reaches out with like a cute picture of you guys from the past. Like, oh my God, look at this Facebook memory that Facebook showed me or, or whatever. There's something very sentimental and cute about this. And the magician is trying to manifest. So it feels like, I don't know if they're necessarily communicating. Let me let me throw a clarifier on the magician. Is this communicate, communication about the past? Is this person actually reaching out to do anything? Yeah, no, they're waiting. So they're, this week anyway, right, guys? These are weekly readings, energy changes. They're absolutely thinking about you. They hold a lot of love for you, right? But with this, it's like they're trying to manifest you back. They're waiting for their ships to come in. So that says for them, it's either not the right time or they sense that it's not the right time for you. And possibly, again, I can't help but notice now we have two kings. And I mean, the, the king of cups and the queen of cups, you know, those are matching elements. So you might have another option. And that could be this sort of fear of why they can't come through or if they're trying not to insinuate third party stuff. Again, threes, right? We have some of that going on. It could be that they feel like they missed out on an opportunity for you. And, and that's what I mean. It's like they weren't fast enough. You were ready to go. And then they're like, no, I don't know. Like they're very cautious and I don't fault them for that, but maybe they were overly cautious or maybe they had some Scorpio stuff where they weren't trusting, right? They were too guarded. And so I don't know, one or both people. Anyway, you know, it could have been a mirror type reflection thing, but how does Scorpio feel about this person specifically? Because the King of Cups just showed himself. So you may have your eyes on multiple people, Scorpio. It's possible, especially with Knight of Wands showing up again. Like variety is the spice of life for Knight of Wands. They're not necessarily the most committed knight. They're all about the action and the energy and the passion and the sex and the fun. You know, very much like, <laughs> I would say work hard, play hard, but you know, they're not working at one, one thing specifically. <laughs> they're a good multitasker, Scorpio. <laughs> All right, sorry. How is Scorpio feeling about this, uh, this this king? I mean, you have kings. I love that. I love that you have kings. You're not sure. You're not sure. This to me is very much a card of holding on to something, but who are you holding on to? This might, and to be honest, Scorp, this won't be everyone's story. This might be wanting to have your cake and eat it too. May, again, some of you, it's like you're you're not looking to settle down yet. You're, you're kind of seeing what your options are and who's going to show up for you. I think if you do know who this is, you still think about them, but I don't see you making any strides to make something happen anyway. It's almost like you're expecting them to come in and, and, and do the work. And to be honest, that makes sense because I think they were the one who, who, who wasn't coming in. Uh, or who was very delayed or just, I don't know, doing healing or not at a place where they could make a big offer, even though they have the world to offer you, though. So this person may have self-worth issues. I, I don't know. It's like, do they think that they're not good enough? And I mean, that's not really sexy, right? It's like everybody wants someone who's confident and who loves themselves. And I mean, easier said than done. Don't get me wrong. Knight of Swords, I think you're hoping that they come to you in a big way and make it known what they actually want because it felt like you were kind of left in the dark. Or you knew that this person didn't know what they want and that they were indecisive and you were like, Psh, bitch, please. Like, I got I got people to see and places to go, right? Anyway, yeah. So this this week, I, uh, I think there's sentimental, nostalgic energy and thinking back on the past. Again, some of you may connect with a new water sign. Uh, possibly a Gemini might be coming in to... Uh, to uh, woo you, so to say, but yeah, that's what I see. All right, let's do an Oracle card <clears throat> for Scorpio. What is good advice or guidance <clears throat> for Scorpio, please? 
I feel like I, let's talk about this King of Pentacles. That's the, that's really the main story that came through. Let's see. Communicate, receive, and express truth. Yes, yeah, so there's not a lot of sword energy here. I'm actually really glad that that came out because I think in, I said, you know, how is Scorpio feeling about this person? I think you're holding on to the idea that this person is going to come around and communicate with you. Knight of Swords is an excellent communication card, right? It's it's fast, it's speedy, it knows what it says, and it's very, uh, yeah, it, it comes in like boom, right? You it can't be ignored. Here, it's like I think this person was like again, like slow earth energy. It's just so slow, and you're just like get on. On with it already like are we gonna do this or not so you know I think that's what you're waiting for um I think you are gonna get communication but I don't know if it's gonna be from that person I mean I, I hope it is if that's what you really want but it might be that right now there's there are, there's other options for you and you yourself might be manifesting a new connection that feels very like a soulmate with the six of cups you may have to wait another week or so or a couple weeks right you may have to wait three weeks you know three months whatever uh, but you may be manifesting a king of cups that really you know again there's a a, a deep soul connection and this person can express from their emotional truth what they really want. So, all right, Scorp, that's what I got for you. Thanks so much. Please do like, share, subscribe. You guys know I love reading for you. Uh, I will see you very soon for more tarot. Bye. Hey, Sagittarius. Sagittarius, sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs. What is coming in for you romantically? What is your love life looking like in the next couple weeks for Sag, please? Who's coming in? A reunion or a celebration uh, with a Cancer? or a Pisces, maybe Scorpio, or someone who's very spiritual. Um, someone who, their presence is very calm, uh, which is, is very different. It's not someone that maybe you're usually, it's not your usual type. There's something a little bit different or peculiar about them. And it's kind of mysterious. Um, but this is someone who's had their eye on you. So it might be that you have mutual friends in common or you're some part of some sort of group or community. Maybe you work together. This person has been checking you out, but you might not know it. Um, although you're very psychic. So you may have had that moment of like, were they checking me out? Or, you know, did they flirt with me? Was that? Um, but it, <laughs> this feels very much like checking you out, like watching you do your thing. And they're just like, oh, damn. <laughs> like you, you, they're all hot and bothered for you, but you'd never know it because they present as very calm and cool and collected. Interesting. Yeah, you, you might work together or they may have helped. This is so random, but there may have been an encounter where they had you or vice versa. Somebody had to help somebody move something or lift something or there was some sort of team project where everybody had to kind of pitch in and do their part and it, it offered some sort of opportunity for you guys to get to know each other a little bit more a little bit more even if it was just on the surface or the periphery like maybe you still don't know them super well but this is just an example maybe your best friend is moving right and they invited a few friends over to like help them move some stuff or to whatever there may have been an interaction like that where you're like oh hey this is so and so blah, 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 blah. and like maybe you didn't talk a lot but it's like that was the introduction into like the, your your orbit your network work that's 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 sort of what's coming through there is some sort of um mutual connection that you guys have so well obviously i mean i know that's obvious but i mean socially like a friendship a, a community or something feeling sector the knight of cups <laughs> this is very cute um i like the knight of cups tell me a little bit more yes tell me more I think they have stars in their eyes for you. Yeah, like this person wants to treat you very well. I think they have a huge amount of respect for you. Um, this person may even, they're very, they're very humble. Hold on. Yes, yes to all of that. But um, I don't know, sometimes when the Empress comes through, it's like, does this person question though if you're out of their league? Like they may put you up on a pedestal. Um, but I don't, I don't necessarily get that vibe, though, to be honest. I, I think it may have to do more with, okay, you're constantly around people, and they're not sure that you see them. It doesn't come from a place of lack of self-worth or lack of love. It's just, that seems very Sagittarian to me. It's like you always have a band of people around you. Um, and I know that's not going to be for everyone, but generally speaking, Sagittarius is a very social sign, very fun, very bubbly, very charismatic. So it's like you're rarely alone. So this person doesn't get a lot of one on one FaceTime with you. Um, it's always like you, you, them and like the whole group. Right. So they have feelings for you, but they're they're not sure if you see them or if you've noticed them. Um, and I, I think you have, I, again, I think you're aware of their existence. You know, they're in your orbit. They're around you in some capacity. But 
I think they have a lot of feelings and they're wondering if you have, I, I know maybe they, they don't know your, your uh, relationship status. Maybe they're wondering if you're single. Um, again, surrounded by people though. Y yeah. You have like a flock of followers and I think, th it, yeah, I, I want to underscore. It's not that they don't think they're good enough, but there's something about, it's not even like I can't get you alone. It's, it's, Help me out here. I'm having trouble coming up with the word. I think maybe they're not a chaser. So if they assume that you're there and you're flirting with everybody in the room, they're not going to stick their neck out because that's just not their comfort zone. Um, because maybe it, they come from a place of having a lot of self-respect with the with the Empress card, you know, male or female, right? Um, <clears throat> interesting. But no, there's single energy here. There's de there's a lot of self-respect, though, honestly, for both of you. I really like that. I think this person maybe is looking for loyalty. And, and I'll be honest, I don't mean this in a malicious way, but I don't think this person wants to be one of many. I don't think this person, if they're, if they're trying to get with you, they don't want to be in constant fear that they are in competition for your time and attention. I kind of think that they're naturally hoping that you see them and, and walk across the room and, and you know, present them with something or, or ask them out or or whatever and maybe you will maybe you will there is something about psychically you do kind of have this is that person into me or like or I don't know maybe you're blown away by their beauty and, and um, you know char charisma or that too but they're kind of quiet though but I think there's something about that that is alluring or intoxicating to you or very intriguing I'll put it that way I think intriguing is the right word um, but yeah there there is something about, I'm not going to do the heavy lifting maybe they've done that in past relationships where they have bent over backwards to make their feelings or intentions known and so there's a, there's more subtlety for this person in terms of like if if Sagittarius wants to ask me out they will I'm not gonna sweat about it but I you know I do like looking at them they're very pretty it has that kind of like maybe they're a little bit shy I could see that again it's not lacking self-worth it's not I don't even think it's lacking confidence I actually think this person is very comfortable in their skin but they might be shy in social dynamics that feels very high priestess to me Oh boy, I just got a whole other storyline, but I'm not even going to go there because I, I got to finish this one up first. Um, <clears throat> there, <laughs> well, okay, I'm just going to say, um, I don't know if this is related to this storyline. This could be completely different. And again, not for the majority. There could be, and I don't even know if it's bad. Well, it's, it's not bad. Sorry, I got to phrase this differently. All right, let me focus my energy. <laughs> there could be surprise news of pregnancy. Um, and I'm hoping that in some ways is planned and you're just surprising the family or the coworkers of the group. Others of you, there could be an ex who comes knocking on your door um, or, or I don't know, vice versa. You, I don't know. There could be surprise news of pregnancy um, with the Empress and the High Priestess and the Nine of Pentacles lady here. It's like there might be multiple suitors here. <laughs> do you guys know what I, I mean? Um, and I, for some reason, I do sort of get the idea that maybe it was someone you blocked or someone you chose to not work with anymore or someone you chose to, to break up with or again, vice versa, someone who shut you out and then, <laughs> whoopsie daisy. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but uh, anyway, okay, moving on. That's that's not the main storyline, but I, it did come through that, that wanted to be like channeled a little bit, so... Anyway, tell me about this shy person. Are they going to step up and ask Sagittarius out? Are they going to say anything? What is the potential action with, with the first person who came through? Again, mutual friends. You guys met on like a project team or through some sort of community or something like that. Sorry, my phone's going off. Future actions towards Sagittarius, please. With as much clarity as we're allowed to have. What, what is this person going to do? Are they going to make any action towards Sagittarius? They're waiting. They're watching you. They're trying to get a pulse on what it is that you want. This also does have a uh, an energy of someone watching from the peripheries. So for some of you Sagittariuses, this person comes out of left field. It's like you may already be yucking it up with multiple people. Maybe you're dating around. Maybe you're not necessarily looking to, you know, establish roots with anyone. You know, maybe you're playing the field and you're just you're dating socially. And there's nothing nothing wrong with that. Again, with the star card, it's like there's many options. There's many stars in the sky. Um, for this person, you're the big one. Like you're the one that they want. But for you, you may have options or you're just, again, you're, you're trying people on for size and see what works. Um, and this to me too, if it doesn't involve any pregnancy or, you know, <laughs> no Jerry Springer storylines, right? 
It could just be the idea that this person sees you as someone that they would want to establish roots with, although they don't know you super well. So I don't know how realistic that is. But again, the star card could indicate you're their wish, you're their dream. They envision what it would be like to have a family with you or to move in with you or to date you, whatever. It could be that the Empress versus the Nine of Pentacles is like, you know, single and ready to mingle versus like settled down. You kind of might be on the cusp of deciding if that's what you want or vice versa. This person is questioning, are you the marrying type or are you the person who actually wants to be exclusive or are you kind of a friends with benefits type person, right? Where it's it's not necessarily uh, exclusive. That, that definitely is coming into play here. And I think this person is cautious to approach because I don't know, with Queen of Cups, I think there is the desire to have exclusivity, right? You know, it's Cancerian energy and I'm not saying across the board, but tends to be a little bit more traditional, like, you know, one-on-one -on -one needs that intimate emotional connection, that support system. Um, you know, someone who maybe has a lot of water in their chart, they want that intimacy and they don't want it. Again, something about the competition, they don't want to be worried that there's other stars in your sky. They're not going to come in unless they know that like, and I mean, the thing is, there's no guarantee of that anyway. So... I don't really know what this person's plan is. It might be Scorpio because it seems very strategic, but it's like they don't really have control over this situation. So they're waiting to see how it pans out. Um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't necessarily get third party. Um, again, not for the majority, but the, I, you do have, <laughs> whether you yourself are male or female, you do have like a, a lot of strong women cards coming through. The high priestess and the nine of pentacles lady can sometimes be the side piece. Um, the empress again is more, it's, it's more virginal. Or, and I'm, I'm sorry, wait, let me take that back. I don't mean virginal. Um, I mean purity in terms of like, I'm a mother, I'm a holy vessel. I've given birth to a child. Like it's, it's sort of like the, like the mother or the whore complex. Right. And I, I don't subscribe to that obviously but i'm there's something a little bit more like more seasoned right like this is not me just like <laughs> painting the town red it, it's a little bit more subtle it's a little bit more subdued it's more weighted it's more heavy because it's more serious like right like there's there's new life involved that sort of thing so that's what i mean like being on the brink of commitment versus wanting to stay single. The Queen of Cups closes off her energy to anyone where the vibe isn't right or psychically she feels like they're, they're, their intentions aren't good. But I think the Queen of Cups, like any water sign, especially, especially Scorpio with this whole like mysterious thing, it can hold on to emotions and become obsessed with them. So just be careful of that. Hopefully you don't, and no offense. I mean, I'm definitely going to offend anyone who resonates with this, but, and I don't mean to, but just careful that you're not dealing with like the crazy ex who's trying to get back in your life and will stop at nothing to do that. Cause that feels a little bit, that could be dicey. That could be dicey. All right. We've wandered down a whole new territory here. Uh, anyway, in regards to this person who's, you know, no third party involvement, whatever, if they're just on the periphery of your life, they're watching and they're waiting, but they're not necessarily making a move towards you, but I think there's a lot of feelings there. You know, I asked about their feelings in Knight of Cups. It's like they would love to move forward with a date or a love offer. Um, but yeah, there's too many people involved. I don't think they'll risk it. Yeah, it, it sort of feels like they're having to let you go because they know that you're not single or they know that you're not in a place to receive the love that they're wanting to give. Maybe they want to make a very big offer or they, they have a very clear vision of what they want with you, but maybe you're just not on the same page. And so this feels very heavy hearted, like they're trying to detach from you or they're trying to let you go, which is funny because it's coming through as someone who it's like, they haven't even made it known that they want to be with you. And yet they're like, oh, I have to let Sagittarius go. It's very much, it's very dramatic, but it's all being kept on the DL. It's very silent. So there, there is a sense of mystery or secrets going on here. I don't know how much you're involved in what's going on here. It feels very much like this is happening around you and you're not necessarily aware that like energetically you have a lot of people vying for your attention, Sagittarius. Oh, to be a Sagittarius. Poor you guys, right? Everybody wants to be with you. <laughs> yeah, look at that too. Options. And someone is closing off their heart because they sense that they would be in competition for your affection and they'll have none of it. Um, and I'm not saying this person is a Scorpio. They could be, but it feels very Scorpio, like all or nothing. If I'm not the star in your sky, I am not going to compete. Like, I don't want to be your friend. It, it feels very much like, are you with me or not? <laughs> so this person may have strong Scorpio on their chart. They may also have like a very, like a, a something like a Pluto placement where it's, it, it can be very obsessive. Um, and I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Sorry. I'm rambling. Let's get, let's get an Oracle card for Sagittarius. 
Um, on a positive note, if you're with your person and then you love them and you're trying to have babies, I see that happening for you, Sagittarius. <laughs> Past life connection. Someone with heavy influence from a past life is with you. That's actually kind of beautiful. Lovers, a passionate connection, shared vision and values. Okay, so I do like shared vision and values very much. Uh, and then declutter, let go of old items, create new sacred space for yourself. So yeah, there, there might be something coming from the past. I, I do sense that. And I don't mean to, I don't do fear-based readings. It's not like, oh my God, someone's pregnant and you didn't know. You know, majority of you, that's not the case. But um, yeah. I, I think I think you have your pick of the litter, Sag. That's what this feels like. Um, so enjoy it. I, I don't know. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for joining me this week. See you next week for more tarot. And please do like, share, and subscribe. Bye, Sag. All right, Capricorn. What's up? Capricorn, sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs. Who's coming in for you romantically? What is your romantic love life, sex life, dating life? What is it looking like in the next couple of weeks? Tell me for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, please. Whatever we're allowed to know. How is this person's energy presenting? Ooh, this card has come out a lot. Maybe a Scorpio. Maybe a fellow Capricorn. You might work with them. All right, someone's coming out of the cold. Um, so I don't, I don't know if it's brand new. It almost has sort of a, a rebirth type energy. There, this is a very strong Scorpio card for me. Um, if something was frosty or chilly, you guys may have had to take like a break or push pause. And then I, I actually think this person might be coming through to, I don't know if it's make an apology or to present you with an offer. Um, it could be also someone that you weren't aware they had feelings for you. You may see them kind of on the, on the daily regular routine. You know, maybe you see them at work. Maybe they work at the coffee shop. Maybe you see them at the bank, you know, whatever it is. It could be that someone that you didn't know had any sort of feelings or affection for you makes it known or asks you out. I, I like that scenario. Uh, tell me more about the feeling sector. Tell me more about the feeling sector. Someone is someone is looking for love here for sure. The feeling sector. They have a very strong connection to their family. They also may have a child from a previous marriage and be wondering if that is going to be a, a point of apprehension for you and in getting involved with them. Um, or, or vice versa. I don't know. Maybe they're wondering if you have kids from a previous marriage. I, You know, if you've been dating and you are building a life together, there could be the topic of conversation about having children or starting a family. Something to do with children. Um, also, assessment of money, being able to provide enough to, to make this work or to put a, a down payment on a house or something about moving mom and dad or moving the parents in with you or putting mom in a, a you know, old folks community or I don't know, something like that. There's major decisions going on with money and family family type stuff. And, and that might be kind of clouding feelings a little bit, or there's, I'll say this, there's strong feelings attached to it, and it might even have to do with guilt. Um, this is not for everyone. This is, again, the minority, but there could be a difference of opinion regarding wanting to have a child or to start a family. Um, and I'm hoping that's early on in the game. That's not something you guys didn't discuss, you know, five years into your marriage, right? Someone may have a change of heart here um, in terms of, there's my alarm, sorry about that. Someone may have a change of heart in considering what it would be like to start a family and maybe they are warming up to the idea, but that did seem to be a point of apprehension or I think really there was fear and anxiety maybe of not being good enough or maybe this person didn't grow up with a strong uh, you know, parental figure and so they're questioning their own parental skills. But I think a lot of times like, and I'm not saying this is true across the board, but you know, what we lacked growing up, I think the, the right person who's self-aware enough makes an F extra effort to be there for their kid in the way that their parent was not. So I, I think maybe this person's apprehension or fear that they're not good enough, it's sort of this illusion. It's not necessarily based in reality. And I think it does come from a place of wanting to be very stable and practical and, and again, wanting to be good enough. Um, this person may have a very strong standard of perfection, a, a high standard of perfection that, that they put on themselves. They might be very self-critical and worry that they're not good enough. But there's that Ace of Cups. Yeah. So it's funny. Sagittarius had a similar message too, news of pregnancy or, or again, if something you guys push pause or you broke up or decided to take a break, I do think this person is coming back around to make an offer to you um, because there was something about they miss your nurturing. You were very, you were very warm. You were very kind. You were uh, very accepting of, 
maybe of a tough a tough position or a tough spot that they came from. I'm seeing something about them sharing something with you that's very serious. It, it makes them feel very vulnerable or or it makes them feel very needy. And that is not their comfort zone. They like to be the ones in control. They like to be the rock, the support system. And in a, in a really beautiful way, it's like you guys found each other because you're able to do that for one another. Um, I really like that. I do see something about happy tears or someone sharing a story from the past that incited or, or provoked a, an emotional reaction and it, it was a a moment that maybe it scared them because they they got very vulnerable and it felt like it was getting real too fast and they that may have scared them off but I actually think they look back and there's sort of this regret or or just this idea of like man like Capricorn was actually really there for me and it's cool that they didn't judge me and they allowed me to like open up like that I think they're realizing that th they're there's a there's an opportunity for a lot of self growth in this in this relationship and again it's not always easy but i think at the end of the day they're realizing like it's very healthy um you give them space to sort of do the emotional work and grow and you're not doing it for them but there's space there there's there's freedom and there's an established safety in, in order to, to have those conversations and be that person and do those things and, and not have shame or guilt or fear surrounding it. Uh, there, there definitely might be some family issues coming up here with your person. The world. Yeah, you have a lot of pregnancy cards, uh, a lot of storylines of, of pregnancy, uh, as did Sagittarius too. So if you're cuspy, you might want to watch that as well. I think this person, if is tr if there was again a breakup, this person is trying to come back into into your world. I I think this person wants to be in your orbit. I think this person wants you to see them again. I think they might be working on themselves, but also working to make another offer and to come back into your life. It's it, it almost has this. I don't want Capricorn to get away. You might be the one that got away, even if they did the breaking up. I think there is regret about how to get back into your life. So what is this person's potential action towards Capricorn, please? The Emperor. There we go. Okay, I do like that. I was going to say the Emperor is not my most emotive card. It can be action oriented, but not always. It, it, the Empress can sometimes have control issues or it can be a... a an abuse of power. I don't I don't necessarily get that. I think this person is working through father issues or daddy issues. I think this person may have issues with authority figures and being told what to do because maybe as a child they, you know, they didn't have a sense of freedom or individuality or they didn't have a sense of their own authority. They weren't allowed to make decisions for themselves and part of them doesn't want to give up that freedom and they have some sort of false narrative in their head that if I get into a relationship that person's going to try and control me. And I don't think you've done that, Cap. Capricorn and props to you because that can be the negative side of Capricorn energy is that Saturn I, I want to control everything and you're you're different you stand out among the rest and you you don't do the thing that their ex did and they do have a little bit of baggage but again you don't hold it against them you've been very kind and patient and supportive with them um, and they I think they have regret that they sort of closed off their energy to you because they got scared you know it got it got too real too fast or there was something where this was forcing them to be more open and vulnerable and and they are ready for that but they don't always think that they're ready for that but I I think this person wants to make make things right with you I think this person wants to make amends <clears throat> for Capricorn what Oracle wants to come out for Capricorn please for Capricorn evaluation Let's see. It says, feed out what doesn't serve you. Feel out maybe what doesn't serve you? I don't know if that's a typo. It says, feed out what doesn't serve you. Reevaluate the situation. I think that's exactly what your person's doing. <laughs> I think you will, if you know who this is, if this is making sense to you, I think your person is going to reach back out to you. Um, because ultimately, the emperor steps up and does do what's right. It's not always a warm, soft, fuzzy energy, but it's like, hey, can we talk? And it might be a very serious conversation about wanting to let their guard down and let in more love um but it's not gonna be like hey boo thinking about you hope you're doing well like no the emperor's gonna be like you know i'd really like to take you out to dinner and, and discuss some serious matters <laughs> which i feel like that that's gonna get capricorn all hot and bothered like ooh, serious matters okay <laughs> all right capricorn that's what i got for you this week please like share subscribe and i will see you soon for more tarot bye guys hello aquarius aquarius sun moon rising and venus signs let us see what is coming in for you romantically. 
in your love life, your dating life, your sex life, whatever wants to come through. Your self-love life. <laughs> Take that as you will. All right, here we go for Aquarius. Uh, how is the person in their life who is coming in or who is already there? Uh, how are they presenting? What is what is some messages about them? Hmm, they might be really focused on work right now. This could have been a situation where you guys had to push pause or it might be past the honeymoon stage or something where the feelings are really kind of raw and, and exciting and passionate. And like it, if you're with your person, and you still have feelings for them. It just kind of seems like romance has sort of gone out the window. So you might need to turn up the dial to spice things up or make something more interesting. It could be that work is really occupying their time, though. Like if, if they're, you know, busting ass at work, they come home and they're just exhausted. So they don't have a lot of energy to feed a romantic relationship. Uh, there could be stress about money or stress about work going on here. Yeah, unexpected stress regarding work. Um, let's let's find out more. What is this tower about? There could be fear of layoffs or firings happening at their job or their business or worrying that they're going to have to cut employees or something like that where <clears throat> there's a lot of apprehension. They don't want to leave or they don't want to necessarily have to, again, like streamline the company or whatever it is, but it's Saturn energy. There's a heavy heartedness, but there is a responsibility here. They do have to show up and, and perform and do their best. So, you know, they're not free and clear yet. There is the rumblings of liberation happening under the surface. You know, symbolically, this can sometimes be like my earthquake card. So it's like things are being shaken up, but not to the point where we have relief yet. There's something that's kind of like, you got to show up like someone's turned the dial up on the stress level. And so it's like they're jogging on the treadmill harder. So if this makes sense to you in regards to your person, be kind to them They're They are kind of going through it. Um, let's find out where the feeling sector is at for my Aquarius. There also may have been a health issue or a medical crisis involved. If, if not for you or them, it may have been regarding their family. They may have had to tend to the needs of people around them. And again, there might be more pressure being put on them to provide in some capacity or, or to find an extra avenue for money to pay a bill or, or something like that. It's like there's, there's a lot of stress. There's a lot of pressure. Pressure breeds diamonds though, right? Isn't that what they say? So feelings, joyfulness, strength. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, I think this person has a lot of deep feelings for you. Now, granted, for those who are single and looking, maybe you don't know who this person is yet. It could be that this person is getting out of a relationship with a Leo. That's possible. Or it could very well be a Leo coming in and they're just like this bright, vivid, shiny, glowing light in your life. You know, they have kind of a, a fun, passionate personality. They're creative. They're enthusiastic. They're, uh, yeah, there, I, I think there's something very dazzling about them. Um, and I don't just mean on a superficial level. I think this person would bring a lot of joy and happiness to your life. And and if again, if it's not new, they possibly have. But there does seem to be a distance um, in your relationship currently. And it just might just, sorry, it might just be like an emotional void. Like, again, it's not as exciting and passionate as it used to be because you guys are exhausted. Because, again, responsibilities, life happens, right? This, to me, doesn't feel like throwing in the towel. If anything, for those who are single and looking, you may have a person coming in in the near future, and it may happen kind of unexpectedly. Maybe there's a connection through work, but it doesn't have to be. There also is a connection uh, through children. I know that's a weird thing to say, but it could be like you both drop off your kid at the same school or something some some connection to children that's not going to be for everyone but yeah this person may actually be removing themselves from an old situation in which case you know they might not be ready to like rebound or jump into bed with someone else but if, if this is on the horizon for you sometimes the card can uh, the sun card can indicate you know the dawning of a new day it, you may have a leo or maybe a gemini coming in something unexpected but i think it's i almost want to say for one or both of you it's radically different than anyone you've dated before or been with before and it's a breath of fresh air. It's very lovely. So potential action <coughs> towards Aquarius, please. What is this person's potential action? What is this person's potential action? Let's see. Possible contract. Poss possibly something to do with a Libra as well. There might be baggage with a Libra or an old storyline with a Libra that you haven't fully released or let go of yet. <coughs> Let's see. This is your card. I think I like this. The Queen of Pentacles is receiving an offer. So if you are dealing, <clears throat> I'm starting to say if you're dealing with an air sign, a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, I do think they will reach out. If you're dealing with a Leo, you might not hear from them this week. <clears throat> Tell me a little bit more. 
Is this King of Swords thinking, planning, plotting, or is he speaking? Is he communicating? He's planning. There's strategy going on here. Again, there's a lot of... There's a lot of concentration and focus being put on money, finances, security, and survival. Um, and I don't mean that in a scary way per se, but again, that's what's occupying your person's mind this week. So like, no shade Aquarius, you know I love you. Right now, this very week, you're not this person's main priority. And to be honest, I want to say rightfully so, because it's like, you know, you can't pour from an empty cup. This person has something significant going on in their own personal life that they need to sort out before they come to you with this love offer, because otherwise, they're making an offer <coughs> excuse me I was say they're making an offer you can't refuse now they're making an offer that they can't really uphold so wait for them to come in when it's a real offer when it's a king of pentacles offer i do think this could indicate you know king and queen of pentacles it's a nice little pairing i do get the sense though that you may have options again it won't be everybody's story but with the lover's energy you might have two leos you might have two earth signs you may have an earth sign and an air sign um for those who don't know earth is taurus virgo capricorn air is gemini libra aquarius there's a lot of signs showing up so you don't need to read too much into that but if you aquarius strongly resonate with feminine energy energy you may have two kings sort of in battle for your attention or competing for your attention or again there could be the severing off of a relationship in order to embrace a new one that is more steady and more solid and i'm not sure if one or both of you are liberating yourselves from an ex or a past relationship for aquarius it's almost coming through as having to like mentally put something to rest and like sort something through mentally it's not necessarily that this person's still in your life but the memory like the wounding the heartbreak you might still kind of be um, exercising that out, if that makes sense. And again, if you don't know who this is, if you're completely single and no prospects, your person hasn't come in yet because they're still tying up loose ends with either, I don't know, an old job, an old flame, an old marriage or relationship. They may be liberating themselves to come in and start, start some sort of new relationship that I think has a lot of potential to make you very happy, good sexual compatibility. Yeah, that's, that's sort of what I see here. All right, for Aquarius. Aquarius. <clears throat> this one it says retreat, time spent alone, reflection on the past and current situations. Yes, yeah, so I mean, not every week is going to be super juicy and amazing, right? That's life. If I was telling you every week that you're going to win the lottery and meet the person of your dreams, you know, I wouldn't be a stand up tarot reader here, right? So this week doesn't look super exciting, but I don't see anything that's like, oh man, watch out, this looks tricky. I think, you know, you, you probably aren't going to be booed up this week, you know, or maybe the next two weeks. I would say clear out and make space for new relationships if that's what you're wanting. Again, sort through storylines of the past and narratives that you can finally put to rest. Do some healing and, uh, yeah, cathartically work through that stuff because something good is trying to come into you. I, again, I, I think it's on the horizon. It's coming in. So, um, yeah, I love that. Thanks so much, Aquarius. Please like, share, subscribe, and I will see you soon for more tarot. Bye. All right. Lovely and beautiful Pisces. How are you, my friends? I hope this cancer season finds you well. Pisces rising, illuminating your fifth house of dating, love, romance, sex, joy, pleasure, creativity, children. All right. Let's see what's going on romantically for my Pisces gang. Pisces sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Let's get them some messages about their love life for their best and highest good. Let's help them navigate where things are at romantically or what might be coming in. For Pisces, please. For my Pisces. Maybe something with a Libra. I don't know. Energetically, that just felt like it wanted to be said. <laughs> Interesting combination, Pisces and Libra. Let's see. So you may be dealing with someone who has an on-again, off-again thing with a fire sign, and they might be at a crossroads of making some sort of final decision or determination if they're going to move forward with it. If for some reason, this is speaking to me about having romantic options. And I am reading for your person's energy. So this, this may involve you. Um, I'm thinking it probably does. Unless you haven't met this person yet, it could be that you meet them and they decide to maybe cut things off with the fire sign that they were maybe casually seeing. Or I don't know if I get wifey vibes from this. You know, maybe someone was into like kind of um, friends with benefits or like, I don't know, it, it's sort of, it's speaking to me as like casual sex, which I'm not here to judge, right? You know, whatever. Um, but yeah, someone may have sort of mixed feelings that come into play. I'm thinking maybe because they meet you or something gets initiated with you that starts to change the game in terms of who or what they're pursuing. Um, 
Yeah, I think they actually end up maybe putting something to rest once and for all. It's, uh, this almost seems too good to be true. I, I want to be careful because I don't want to paint false hope. But yeah, I don't know. I, I have to trust my intuition here. And to me, it's like the cards are saying that for a lot of my Pisces, if you were dealing with someone who was seeing other people, they may sort of have some sort of change of heart where they actually start to fight for you, where they start to make strides in their own life to... Uh, to declutter things, so to say, to, um, what's a good, pair things down so that it, it's making more space essentially for you. Because I'm reading about who's coming in. Um, so just, you know, I think you have no reason not to ask for clarity and, and to, you know, hope this person is going to be transparent as, as you want them to be. Um, but again, you have to mirror that back. You have to mimic them. So if you yourself, Pisces, have some options and you're seeing what plays out, I wouldn't be surprised if you meet someone who's in a similar boat. And it's not to say they're necessarily cheating or that there's um, infidelity. I'm not necessarily saying that. It's just this is someone who's keeping their options open. But I do feel like they finally have a reason to fight for something or they feel more motivated than ever to reach out to you and try and make something happen. So tell me a little bit about the feeling sector. I, I don't know if this is going to be a complicated one. I don't know if this is new or not. Um, part of me says with the seven of wands, this person has a reason to fight for you now. And maybe they didn't feel like they did before because they didn't know what they wanted. So maybe there's a little bit more clarity on what this person is looking for in the long term. Or if they are looking in the long term, maybe at first they were looking short term and, you know, kind of like, uh, I just want to feel good right now. And that, that was their main focus. So maybe they're thinking like, I don't know. They, they might be wanting to look at something more lasting. There's a lot of fire energy coming through. So you yourself, my Pisces, may have strong fire in your chart. Again, it could be your person or some something about that in their past. It's so funny. I was looking at this seven of uh, wands and her her kind of queen of wands. I'm like, that feels like an eight of wands to me. It's like, I think this person is going to message you or move towards you. And that's the card that came out. I wish I had said that. But anyway, that's cool. I was feeling that. It's funny how that works sometimes. Okay. Anyway, tell me more. I think their feelings are growing. I think there's forward momentum in terms of like, there you go. There's that pair. There's that match. So again, for some of you, this person is like breaking up with their ex or finally letting go of an ex, even if they weren't in their life anymore. I, th I think to move towards you, particularly if you, Pisces, again, have strong fire or are cuspy with Aries. Double confirmation there. Um, tell me a little bit more. In the feeling sector, a lot of passion, a lot of sexy energy, a lot of like, let's get naked vibes. <laughs> um, and then Cancerian energy potentially is kind of coming into this as well. Um, I, I think this person is going to travel to see you or you're going to make plans to meet up. It doesn't have to be a huge travel, right? They might live a few towns over or a few cities over, whatever. Um, I actually see you guys taking a walk together, if that makes sense to anyone. Um, it's something about a cool car or a cool motorcycle or a cool, I don't know, cool mode of transportation transportation. I don't, I don't know if they like riding four wheelers or what. There's something about like a cool car or a cool vehicle. Um, I don't know why that's coming through, but I think it's meant just for a confirmation. So some of you will, will know if it's your storyline or not. Maybe they offer to take you for a ride in like their cool convertible or I don't know. I don't know something about that, but I, I do think it, it's coming up in the feeling sector, but it, it feels like they're, they have enough feelings for you, which is motivating them to, um, to take action essentially. So Let's see. Yeah, I think they're trusting their intuition about you because they have good vibes. I think if this was an on again, off again thing, or you met them once and it kind of fizzled, I think when they met you, it happened at a time where they didn't have clarity about what they wanted. And so I don't think it was by any means malicious, but you may have felt led on and then they ended up breaking up with you or breaking it off or just kind of, I don't want to say ghosting. I don't know if I get that vibe, but maybe you, you, you sense that they were pulling back. And I think you were right. And, and yeah, I don't get this scenario a lot. So if it's, if it's your story and you're here for it, I'm happy for you. But I do think this person changes their mind. I think this person has a change of heart. Um, they, something about meeting you, it gave them a little bit more clarity. And maybe it's that absence makes the heart grow fonder. Maybe they had to miss you to realize that, that you're the one that they want to build with. And here's why I think it's, it's about longevity. We have the Empress coming up. The Empress is Taurian energy. And I guess you could say Libra. It's, it's a Venus card, right? Venus is all about loving connections. And with the Empress, it's a, it's a more matured energy. It's a major arcana, right? 
Um, so it, it holds more weight. It's more significant. The empress is who you create a life with or build a family with, build a life around. You know, it's, it's you, you get rooted in the ground and, and grow from there, right? You're on the up and up, that sort of energy. Taurians are in it for the long haul, right? So maybe you're dealing with a Taurus. You might be, you might be. But I think in, in regards to their action plan, it's like, I think they want to appeal to all your senses and uh, that that feels very important i think they view you as as the full package and so i think they're wanting to make themselves appear worthy of you and maybe they didn't at the time i feel like i get that storyline a lot especially recently it's like it's not like we're consciously operating on it but people really it's like they meet someone who who checks all the boxes and blows them out of the water and then they're like oh i can't and it's like what the like what why are you self-sabotaging like you have someone who's willing to give you give you their heart and you're just like ah oh, it's i can't it's not right and i think a lot of times it has to do with self-worth issues um again i i don't think that's on a conscious level but people self-sabotage because it's easier to it's easier to run away and not deal with the intense feelings but um i, I do kind of like this for you pisces um i do still have a storyline here though of choices and and moving forward with a choice for the long haul um but one or both of you may kind of be playing the field or you may have romantic suitors but you're not necessarily blown out of the water by your current one if that's the case there might be something else coming in that it feels like the right choice and here's how you're gonna know this to me is always a, a card that says trust your intuition because your spirit guides are speaking to you through your intuition. So make sure you're, you know, taking good care of your health and your body and eating right and exercising and meditating and, you know, grounding yourself because you are a recipient, right? You are a channel of, for, for those messages coming from the divine. So be in a good spot where you're able to receive those intuitive downloads and those hits because that's going to help you navigate this situation. But to be honest, I, I think you have something really lovely coming in. I think this person is going to at least message you and very likely make plans to meet up. And I, again, I, I, like, I, I don't want to shoot for the moon here. I'm not saying they're going to meet you, instantly fall in love and be like, marry me. Um, because I, I, I don't think that would be realistic. And I think your intuition would be like, something's off here. That's too good to be true. But I do think over time, this, this could grow into something very cozy. And it might end up being a person that you do build a life with. Um, there might be ex exes involved, ex-husband, ex-wife. There could be uh, stepchildren. There there could be something like that with the big family card coming through. But it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. So... All right. Just make sure this person is single if that's what they're telling you that they are, right? You know, trust your intuition. If something seems fishy, it probably is. You're incredibly psychic, Pisces, so you will have no problem navigating that. But I don't know why I'm wanting to underscore this so bad. Whatever current situation you're in, if you're doing something on the sly, you are going to meet that exact same situation in a romantic partner. So, you know, be a stand-up guy, be a stand-up girl. You know, if don't do like the sneaky clandestine texting my ex on the side because that's what they're going to be. Like, you know what I mean? Set yourself up for success. So, somebody out there needed to hear that. Sorry. I know that's not the majority of you, but... All right, for Pisces, let's wrap it up with an Oracle card. Happiness, look at that. New discoveries that lead to celebration. Love yourself first. And honestly, I think that's what this person had to do. They weren't in a place where they loved themselves enough to realize that they were worthy of receiving the amount of love that you were willing to give, which Empress Energy is like, she's got endless, endless abundance and love to give. And then this says sacrifice, such a Pisces word, giving up something now for a future reward. So uh, yeah, there is some sort of decision that needs to be made, possibly of letting go of someone. Um, and uh, maybe that's on your side, maybe it's on theirs, but maybe it's both. Again, there's such a mimic to, to this reading, but I like this. I like this for you, Pisces. Um, let me know in the comments below if it resonates for you. Please like, share, subscribe. Thanks for joining me today, guys, and I will see you soon for more tarot.